Hello, it is I, your humble storyteller and dungeon master, B. Dave Walters, ready to do some spell jamming. Hello, I am Tristan Falcone, and I am going to be playing Walnut Dongrass, a very stubborn wood elf circle of the moon druid. I'm Eugenio Vargas, I'm DM Jazzy Hands, and I'm playing Kent, our phantom rogue tiefling. Hi, I'm Brian Gray, and I am playing Virgil, the Asimar sorcerer. Hi there, my name is Anna Prosser. I play Evelyn Marthane, who is a human Oath of the Ancients paladin. Hi everyone, I'm Holly Conrad. I'm playing Strix Beastinger. She is a sorcerer and a tiefling and a mess. Hello, and welcome to episode two of The Hunger of the Far Realms. I am still very much not used to not having to introduce myself and everybody else, because you just heard us introduce ourselves. But in my head, I'm still introducing everybody. Uh, before we get to it, uh, as always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for voting for those of you that did vote in Idol Champions to affect the outcome of today's episode. If you voted, you already know what's going to happen. If you didn't vote, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. We'll just reveal it when we get there. Uh, as always, again, uh, thank you. And we acknowledge that the stakes are high here. A lot's going on. But as always, uh, please no backseating. I assure you, everyone you see on the screen right now are highly capable and skilled and know these characters and what they're capable of very well. There might be many reasons why they might make a choice uh, that might seem non-optimal to you in the moment. Um, up to and including pressure and abject terror. I hope it's because of pressure and abject terror, but you never know. So no backseating, please be respectful. We're all here to have a good time. Stream codes. Uh, I wouldn't, well, I'll just say it first and then I have to give it to you as a verbal component. It is episode two ICP4 code. Uh, episode two ICP4 code, which would be episode ik for day, <laughs> which I don't know what that'll summon, but uh, if you put it in the Idol Champions, it will summon one gold Kent chest, which expires on the 31st on Halloween. So, hey, it's a very spooky code uh, for you to, in uh, to enter in there. Also, giveaways for the US and Canada, two WizKid Spelljammer Adventures in Space boosters. Uh, the D&D Icons of the Realm Spelljammers Adventures in Space boosters. Once again, for all of Canada, except Quebec, say it with me now. Quebec, you know what you did. Uh, for our international friends, including Quebec, there's the Ahoy Matey Collection, uh, which is a Founders Pack 5 and the winner's choice of a theme pack. So you'll, if you are fortunate enough to win, you'll get to choose which theme pack you receive. Winners will be announced at the end of the episode. I believe uh, the entry is gonna open up during the break. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sure somebody's gonna be saying it in my ear very shortly. But either way, stick around, because I know for sure the winners are going to be announced at the end of the episode. Uh, before we dive back into this, as always, thank you to our moderators, Jay and Jordan, for keeping us and you safe and making sure that everybody has a super chill time. So, dear friends, aboard the Light Fantastic, you are screaming through space, having narrowly escaped the attack of the vampires after having liberated the ship from impound on the rock of brawl um through quick thinking of a relic that evelyn gained in times long past and your combined eldritch might you all drove the vampires off successfully and now captain carstairs uh, stands next to you on the bridge and says what hey uh, two things, team, huddle up. One, I'm sure that's the last we've seen of those vampires. Never gonna hear from them again. Two, I'm sure this is the hardest part of what we're gonna have to do, breaking out of the rock of brawl. From here, it is smooth scaling into the far reaches of space to a destination that several ships have never returned from, but maybe they didn't return because it was fun. I mean, think about it. You don't know. Uh, maybe it, it, so. Yeah, that sounds totally reasonable to me. Yeah. Does right? it? Yeah. Just to clarify, this location that we are heading, you do know where it is, yeah? I mean, that, I know, that, it, okay, no. Uh, I, okay, mm -hmm. All right, so remember, we, we mm -hmm. talked about this before. I know a lot happened, the vampires, that was cool. I saw that thing you did, Kent, when you were like, you know, that was that was impressive. Like, Lathander. You, you know, it, 
you generate a lot of power for somebody with those like lean arms. Like how you do that? Is that like like a? It's you know it's that it's that lean muscle fiber. You know what I mean? It's like it's deceptive. It's a, you know uh, props to you. Also, walnut turned into a spider. That was terrifying. But uh, a robot spider was trying to eat me. So I guess all things being equal, it was a win, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So okay, do I know where we're going? No. Um, yeah. Do I know how to get there? No. Um, am I 100% sure that I could do it? Like 80, 85. All we gotta do, go to the ship. I told you where the wreckage was. We'll get the sextant, sextant, not the sextant. That is a very different thing that we're going after. And then we'll be able to go out in the far realm space, take you all where you're trying to go. Easy peasy. We'll be back in no time. We can never return to the Rock of Brawl because I'm sure we're all wanted fugitives, but hey, hey, that's future our problem, right? I, uh... I'm taking the baby chicks that were the polymorph vampires and just tossing them into space. <laughs> <laughs> Be free. Br brutal. Strix, <laughs> as you toss the little baby chicks out, God. you notice they fly about six feet and then drop over the side of the ship. And a few moments later, you see them coming up on the other side of the ship, caught in the <laughs> gravity well of the ship. <laughs> as you now have a, a little... Um, uh, rings of polymorphed vampire chicks floating around. Uh, I mean, do I think they're trapped there? Because I will stop my concentration and just let them, if they're stuck. As you are uh, sitting here trying to figure this out, <laughs> Strix. And can I breathe? I'm also like, can I breathe? <laughs> you can <laughs> okay. breathe. Everyone can, uh, magically, the ship has an air bubble around it, which shockingly is the same size of the gravity well around it. Uh -huh. um, you see Dark Hassan, that particularly nervous dwarf, comes up next to you, Strix, and he goes, oh, well, <laughs> That's, that's one of the things that'll get you out of here. You just, you get stuck and then you're just orbiting and orbiting and orbiting. Like you think you're falling overboard, but then you're falling up and then down and then up and then down. Terrible way to make it through your days. Good thing I have telekinesis. I, 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 are you gonna push them out of the air envelope? Because I mean, they're like vampires. I don't even know if they need to breathe there, uh, quite I, frankly. That's true. This is a this is a quandary. Uh, I get, I'll use some telekinesis. Um, for, it's all from my staff, and just push them into space. <laughs> <laughs> nice. As one by well, important point of clarification, Strix. As you push them out into space, are you leaving them as chickens, or are you turning them back into vampires? I'm gonna leave them as chickens because as soon as they're damaged, they'll turn back anyway. Correct. Yeah. You all watch <laughs> one by one as these chickens pierce the oxygen veil and <laughs> struggle and freak out for a second and very clearly begin to asphyxiate and then turn back into pirates, floating. <laughs> I, look and, at him, <laughs> I look at the dwarf and I'm just like, I really didn't want to watch the chickens suffer, so I'm glad that they turned back. Yenoris, that old grumpy sailor, just sort of walks up next to you, Virgil, watching this, and he says, I just... I'm just too old for this, man. I just, that's not something I needed to see. Suffocating chickens turning into vampires that was vampires to begin with. What, what are you, what are y'all? Well, well, we're it... here. Oh, that's, In... that's all I got for now. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. The, this, the, this very small, very positive, very weapon adorned woman here. I'm sorry, miss. I didn't make you old queens. Oh, hi. I'm Evelyn Marthain, servant of Lothander, the Morning Lord. Nice to meet you. I'm Yenoris. Uh, this is my last mission. I'm and just after this. I'm hanging them up. I'm gonna just find myself a piece of land somewhere. And as he starts rambling about retiring, the rest of the crew is like. Evelyn listens very earnestly, <laughs> like hanging on every word. <laughs> While Evelyn is listening, uh, what is Kent doing? Kent actually, having heard Evelyn's introduction again, Kent is trying to track it to come up with his own flowery, lengthy introduction, because now he feels <laughs> like he should have one too. Important point of clarification is Walnut still means. a spider, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Um, I think Walnut would have dropped it so that, uh, well, actually, no, interesting. No, because when the captain was talking, I think she would have done an eight eye eye roll. Um, right. And then that would have exhausted the wild shape because it was just such an eye roll. So, no, she's back to being, being an elf and uh, is uh, listening to the, the old decrepit sailor talk about retiring. And she's just saying, I also tried to retire, and here I am. Every time you get out, they pull you back in. That's I right. It. Every time you try to get out, they pull you back in. I don't. It's... I don't know what to do. <laughs> Walnut, uh, if you would, give me a perception check. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> okay, let's see. Big money. Well, that's a 15. It's fortunately enough they rolled very poorly. Walnut, as you all are lamenting this, and you see Evelyn is still very much listening, that Thrycreen uh, that you met before uh, is creeping forward. Um, um, Ian, Ian, Ian Krana is the Thrycreen's name, Ian Krana, um, and is near Evelyn's boots, and you can see uh, she's trying to tie Evelyn's shoelaces together, but there's a lot of metal on Evelyn's boots, so you see, like, really having trouble with it, but Evelyn seems not to notice. It's just like... There's wings on the boots that are flapping, so I imagine yeah. it's kind of, like, flapping in the face. Yeah, right. Um, it's trying to actually tie the wings together now, oh! you know? Like, and you can uh, kind of hear the happy little clicking noises coming from his jaws. Uh, once again, I just love this bug. I'm enthralled. I'm just watching this being like, nature's truly amazing. Incredible. <laughs> Strix, while all of this is taking place, you hear, hey, uh, Strix. Strix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's me. It's over here. It's Durs. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm upside down. I tend to be upside down. And as you look, the Hadozi <laughs> is hanging from the mast of the ship. Remember, this is a, a, a fish ship. It actually mm. looks like a beautiful fish flying through space, uh, but it still has some mass. Mm. And he's hanging upside down and he's like, hey, uh, you remember I said, as long as you keep them snacks flowing, I'd make sure you live. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, hey, great. Also, uh, well, first of all, uh, you got any more than my eyeball pies? Because that was sort of, uh, you know, that was <laughs> revelatory. I never experienced anything I, like that. It's a new recipe. I, it wasn't on purpose, but you know, sometimes we have happy little accidents and I'll reach into my robe and just pull out one that's definitely been in my armpits. It's still warm and I will hand it to him. Without hesitation, the Hadozi almost unhinges his jaw and shoves it in. And <gasps> then you see in his eyes, mistakes were made. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. do you like it? Yeah, but hey. Um, is is that is that how you show you like things? Is by vomiting? I've done that. <laughs> Isn't that how you do it where you're from? That one of the ways. It's, oh, fantastic! Hey, check this out. Um. When they start giving out positions on the ship, you just stick close to me. I'm going to show you the cushy one, so it'll be smooth sailing this whole way, all right? Oh, I mean, I can, uh, if I need to blow anything up, I'm, I'm also, I'm very helpful with that. He motions at one of the vampires just flailing helplessly <laughs> as it flies off into the distance, and he's like, uh, you're clearly very useful in a number of scenarios. I'm glad we're friends. Uh, once he says, I'm glad we're friends, can I insight check? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're not friends. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't, I don't, oh, I rolled a one. Oh. We're best friends. I was about to say, like, this is weird. Like, this Hadozi's about to propose, Strix. Yeah, like, this we're, is all we're very best sudden. friends. Yeah, I completely yeah. trust you. <laughs> yeah, there's something, the, the eyeball pie. Thumbs up, man. Like, hey, it's magical. Oh. Yeah, anyone that vomits around me, I just immediately have instant trust. <laughs> As you all are sort of interacting with the crew here, you see that grumpy uh, auto gnome is moving around in the background and very quickly got to work. In fact, it's the only one uh, that you can see that has gotten to work. The plasmoid navigator seems to have disappeared, but uh, Rogbutt, the auto gnome, just finally stops and puts down a barrel and is like, if they're going to be aboard, shouldn't they look the part? 
And the captain says, you guys are um, just a little bit conspicuous. Just kind of. Just <gasps> Makeovers. Makeovers. Oh, no. I worked very hard on this specific outfit. No, if I'm conspicuous, you, it's because I want to be. No, you look great. You look great. We just need to just slightly change um this. Just just this. And and then it'll be great. Do we need to go shopping? I love shopping. No, we, oh. we got we we got stuff down here. We got no just just come just Walnut come with can me. come shopping with me. No, no that takes like absolutely it's, never. That takes no, like I'm, a week with Evelyn. <laughs> no, I, I I must insist. No, we, we we have a pretty significant wardrobe downstairs from all the crew we've had, most of which that died, but we kept their stuff afterwards, and so I'm sure there's something down there that is going to fit all of you. Right. Yeah, you cool. have right. a costume closet and you just now told us Evelyn is running. <laughs> As Evelyn runs downstairs. She looks at you guys and is like, really, I really like you guys. Uh, Evelyn, if you would give me uh, acrobatics with advantage. All right. So it's either 17 or a nat 20. <laughs> it, Too excited. Evelyn, oh. Evelyn, as you're like, make over and get ready to run, you realize your boots have been tied together. Uh, <laughs> you see it by a mile because the, the job was kind of crude. And you even see the Thrycrane's shoulders just shaking over in the corner. Watch it. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. But with a natural 20, you can resolve this however you like, Evelyn. I think that like... Um, <laughs> she notices and then kind of like giggles and pretends to trip but flips in this very acrobatic like show of air dance and like basically floats to wherever she was going <laughs> you all see evelyn do this and the whole crew just kind of stops and is just like staring wide-eyed at this like yeah, clothes are gonna make us less conspicuous. <laughs> you see, uh, you, you you never hate a makeover. I don't understand. Where this <laughs> is coming from. So hard on this, and we're getting secondhand clothes from some dead person. You like no, no, tombs? What is wrong with things from it, dead people? At least like half of this stuff was never worn because they got killed before they got their makeovers. No, come on, let's go. And she is just sort of like ushering you all down below into the hold. <laughs> Oh, Strix like tries a... to like run, or <laughs> 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 yes. and like hide. Like she's like she's like just looking for things that maybe she can just like use around the ship. Like there's no need. There's no need. Uh, you see, uh, Anaka, the astral elf first mate, just uh, sees you struggling, Strix, and just says, "Chances are there's nothing uh, for." <laughs> this young <laughs> sentient uh, down, down below. How about you just stay up here with me and uh, the rest of you go take a look. Oh, I have so much I can show you. I've actually been planning for this trip into space for a long time. And she pulls out a giant roll of paper. <laughs> He's like, good, good, good. The rest of you go. Uh, as you all make your way down into the hold, um, you, she does lead you into a room as described, uh, it is absolutely packed with clothes, uh, impractically so. There's no, it's not like a closet that you can very easily go through. You can see things have just been squooshed um, into um, uh, wardrobes, basically along the walls. And she's like, there you go, have at it. I'm, imagining, I'm imagining the captain's secret uh, closet from Stardust. Like exactly. all of the clothes. Com complete with the floofy dresses, absolutely. Yes. yes. The Even captain has stars in her eyes. The captain herself, you might recall, looks relatively downtrodden. Like her stuff looks actually a little old and worn. But as you know, when you guys found it, she didn't even have her ship. Uh, but there is nice stuff in here. Um, shockingly, things that fit all of your individual aesthetics. <laughs> well, mm. go figure. What a surprise. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> statistically, the first mate is like, statistically speaking, the odds were high. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, 
all of you, let's see, how should we do this? Just give me charisma checks, not saves, just checks. Twenty-two. <laughs> of course, you are the embodiment of charisma, Evelyn. Okay. Fourteen for Virgil. I uh, for Kent. My name is Kent. That's Virgil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. You even you even share say you even share um. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sometimes we yeah. Till death. Till death <laughs> it depends how to do. <laughs> Who's death? Honestly. Mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, that's a natural twenty, so twenty-four for Virgil. Uh. Virgil, you see Kent very much heading towards the wrong thing, and, <laughs> and you sort of like over there, the, the, over there for the <laughs> first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Walnut, uh, Walnut got a cozy little eleven. You know, <laughs> surprising actually, no one. Strix, Strix, still give it to me because there, there's there's some <laughs> possibilities even up here. Uh, I didn't roll that well. I got a thirteen. I usually do better than that. <laughs> you know, this is actually fantastic. Uh, as you all start looking around in here, again, there is some really great stuff uh, and you're able to get changed. Strix, you're even able to find some things uh, that you like that fit your very unique aesthetic. Um, uh, up, on, uh, up kind of all over the ship here. Um, oh yeah, I'm pulling pieces off the sail. Like if there's any sort of like metallic looking thing, I'm pulling like strips of it off, like peeling it. Uh, give me a perception check, Strix. <laughs> this oh is going to go I got an great. 18. It, you see members of the crew are absolutely horrified <laughs> at this. <laughs> Uh, but Orberil, that little halfling from Neverwinter, is like, uh, this is just how we do it back home. We uh, repurpose aspects of a vessel while it's uh, in motion. <laughs> yeah, okay, just, uh, just uh, come this way. This piece like, is clearly falling off. It's all jaggedy. It, it, it's uh, that's just because you ripped it. Okay, um, all right, great, no problem. Uh, for the rest of you. <laughs> After you have your makeovers here and have a chance to to change, uh, tell me what you look like. Uh, starting with Virgil here uh, with this natural twenty. <laughs> um, yeah, Virgil's gone through everything and kind of pulled out pulled out a few elements and then uh, snaps his fingers and this sort of crackle of lightning comes up from around his feet, swirling towards above his head. And his outfit has completely changed. He is now wearing, it's not quite a captain's outfit, not quite a land captain. It's more of a space land captain. Um, just done up, still in his blues. He has added a touch of a cape because he knows Kent would really enjoy that. It's got a sort of a star field effect going on in it. Uh, he's added a bit of a touch of white to the boots to make them a little more spacey and uh, he's got a bandana on and somehow way more hair than he did before. Um, his eyes are done up in an amazing um, over eye makeup look and his fan has now uh, been updated with a sort of a star field uh, blue and pink neon effect. And he uh, he just looks at Kent and says, good. <laughs> um, Kent has wandered over. Uh, Kent is being a real brat about this. I am not really sure why, but Kent is being a real brat about this. Uh, <laughs> so Kent he had a look. No, I, I did it. Like, it, like, thank you. He had a thing he was the doing, whole, and I took time, and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, right. So he has walked over to Virgil and has just found like a little, like, pretty standard, like mother of pearl stone, like brooch, and has sort of taken off his cape clip and replaced that with this brooch. Uh, and he sees Virgil and is like, oh. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I like it when you dress up like a captain. Uh, and then he sort of, uh, he says, but this is all I'm doing and hits the, the brooch and the brooch starts to sort of glow a bright, like magenta neon pink. Uh, and it startles me and the mithril in my horns uh, begins to glow the same pink, as does uh, all of the sort of mithril threading in my armor. Uh, and there's sort of a flash as these wings, these uh, sort of 
silvery wings pop out of the brooch. Uh, and as they do, there's this flash and uh, Kent's cape is now this sort of magenta, sparkly star cape. Uh, and all of his vials of poison around his boots are fun, multiple colors. Uh, and he's, <laughs> he's wearing the narrowest little tricorn you've ever seen uh, in between his horns with an enormous sort of violet uh, feather coming out the back and draping down to his shoulders. The Captain Capstair uh, looks at you and kind of looks at the two of you and she goes, well, uh, two things, love this, all of this works. Uh, first of Was all- Was this okay? Just cause you look better than me, Virgil. I'm still the captain, look at my face. I'm the captain. Uh, no, I'm and, the I'm the land captain, the, the space but, land, the land space captain. Land okay. space. You're, the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the captain. <laughs> but uh, but Kent, Kent like did this like twirl thing that was sparkles, it was weird. Um, but Virgil, you just sort of, the, I'm, what I'm asking is when this is over, could you guys maybe help me? Like, I just, I mean, like, whatever. I mean, like, I don't care because like, I, I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, they like dress for the role you want, right? Which was captain and then I got it. So like, I don't know how I can, I think we can, uh, we can help you out. Oh, I was planning on saying yes several sentences ago, but I enjoyed listening to you sort of keep going. Walnut, as you were making your way through, you actually find um, what looks like was a misplaced trophy, what probably was like a mounted fish of some sort that was like really oh. great, yeah, but is kind of falling apart a little and yet is still sort of perfect. Um, well, I pick up this, this fish, which I just rip it off of its, I'm assuming it had been on like a placard, like nailed mm -hmm. to a placard. And I, mm -hmm. I rip that thing off. Um, and does anything happen or do I do this now? This is up to you. Great. Wonderful. So once I have this, um, stinky old mounted fish that I want to say was just improperly preserved, um, and I'm just kind of like hefting it around. I'm like, oh yeah, ooh, mm, got some good bones on this fish. Good balance, um, good weight. It, it's like uh, uh, denizens of uh, you know the the spatial deep kind of just start uh, floating up to walnut. Like they're like think about like you know like mice in an apartment, but this is like jellyfish in a spell jammer ship. Um, just like the pests that had been in the ship just start kind of like coming up around her and like making, making, uh, you know, resting on her shoulders, these big bright red jellyfish. There's a, 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 a starfish that kind of, kind of creeps up. Like it's looking at the fish too. And it becomes like her, um, her chest plate. Um, sh and, uh, she looks down, there's a, there's a, there's an octopus kind of coming out of the woodwork and she's like, oh yes. Hello. Oh, so sad. I know you are also trapped out here in the big starry uh, you know, death void. And she picks up the octopus and ties it around her waist like a big shirt. Um, and uh, just starts arming herself with the different uh, bones of the fish and uh, holds the skeleton like it is like a like a maul. And she's just decked out with these ship pests, essentially. Um, uh, whether, uh, oh, go ahead. The captain's like, I, I think those escaped from the mess. That was supposed to be our din. Uh, you know what? No, you just, uh, you, yeah, no, looks much better on you. Uh, and Walla just kind of uh, looks down at everyone, and, she, and she's, she's like, "Don't worry, I'll, I'll get to you back to where you belong." And in her mind, one hundred percent, these are also things that were from her plane that she needs to now go put back in the water. <laughs> <laughs> you. You all see an interesting hodgepodge of what the captain said that probably was creatures that were going to be dinner at some point. Uh, but some of these things are clearly spacefaring creatures. These odd spectral octopi uh, that are kind of starry and semi-transparent and all these things just wrapped around Walnut, but they all seem super happy with it and Walnut does too. We love it. Uh, Evelyn. So I think Evelyn is like, rifling through the closet like ooh shove ooh shove you know like hanger sounds <laughs> um and she's like picking up a dress and holding it up and looking in a mirror and dancing around and then picking up something else and then she kind of like loses momentum and she looks down at her her outfit and her outfit's basically a uniform like a paladin 
uniform that she wears to identify her as a, a paladin of Waterdeep. And her breastplate has um, the symbol of Lathander on it, and so do her pauldrons and everything. So she's kind of like, okay, I... I, I shouldn't change too much. I know that I, I I should show my devotion to the Morning Lord, and that's what's most important. But maybe just maybe just add just a little. And she finds this hat, like hat headpiece that definitely was from um, some sort of space elf that had very loud taste, and it's kind of purple and rainbowy, and it has this big star uh, ornament on the side. And as she puts it on, I imagine. That Lathander is like, don't you know that the sun is also a star? And then she transforms and her um, axe, which also has the symbol of the Morning Lord, becomes a, a bright bluish glowing star in the center. And all of the cloth on her outfit turns different rainbow colors. Like her cape is this starry purple thing and her tabard turns kind of this pinkish red. And basically she looks like if Rainbow Bright were a paladin and she could not be more thrilled. Evelyn, when you do turn and look at yourself in the mirror, you actually don't see yourself. You see Lathander. And he does just say, yes, you do shine brightly, my darling, and it never let your devotion to me stop you from the old razzle-dazzle. <gasps> I never will again. Razzle-dazzle forever. Razzle-dazzle. And he vanishes in the mirror. <laughs> Meanwhile, Evelyn uh, is incorrigible uh, after this, by the way, <laughs> showing everyone every detail of her outfit and explaining that Lathander himself designed it. You all look objectively incredible. And meanwhile, upstairs, uh, Strix, during your uh, reclamation mission here, is Strix going to change it all or are you going to keep rocking what you had? No, so Strix is now explaining like, oh, well, I understand. I need to be properly prepared. Uh, I've been doing research on my own about all of this. And just so you know, she's telling the whole crew, whoever's listening, she's kind of talking to herself at the same time. Mm -hmm. And she's sort of like, well, and then she's fascinating the piece of the ship that she's pulled off into a tinfoil witch hat. <laughs> so she now has a tin, shiny tinfoil witch hat and she pulls out a roll of red string and she's like, I do have this at, at side in in the pie shop but i don't no one wants to look at it and she starts putting the banner like the paper on her where there's now a bunch of pieces of parchment that have her like arcane symbols and pictures of mind flayers and she's like we had some issues with mind flayers i there's just so you know anyone can be a mind flayer anyone i've heard it from multiple really great sources including on many witch streams which i know are great sources of information and they're all true the moment you say anyone can be a mind flayer that nervous dwarf darkassin is like what anyone can be a mind flayer anyone i also heard that mind flayers can't melt steel beams just so you know i i wait i can't melt steel beams <laughs> And she like pulls down the tinfoil witch hat. She's like, just so you know. And then now she's got, <laughs> she's got all these conspiracy theories of my mind flayers written on all of her different parts of her body with red string all over. Her eyes are just really wide. And now she's put a sign on top of her staff that has a big X through mind flayers. And she says, anyone can be a mind flayer. We have to stay vigilant. You see, <laughs> Uh, Borborel, that little halfling, just sort of looks at you and says, wow, I just feel like I need to do my own research now. I recommend uh, like a... witch streams or uh, boo tube. It's well, also it... very great. You know, uh, <laughs> walnut turned into a spider. I just feel like I've been a sheep this entire time. Like We have a big problem be... with sheep as well. <laughs> Mind players can also be sheep. What? <laughs> If you can't trust sheep, what even what even is the point? Any of this? Eh, eh, uh, and this she's is just all like, a... you don't know where to find him anywhere. And she's just like now looking at the corners of the ship, just like digging around, just like trying to find mind flare tadpoles. They're everywhere. You just hear from across the deck, too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Strix, if you would give me a perception check. Ugh. I'm so sorry. I've been planning that bit for a while. It's, you know, the, no, no, oh, no. it was no, perfect. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> one again. So I'm doing really great today. Strix is now so scared. The tinfoil is covering her face. She's yelling. She's throwing pocket sand at people. Like, <laughs> it, 
You know, contextually, this still works. Um, underneath your feet, uh, again, you're you're on the deck of the ship, so you know yeah. there's there's rooms beneath you. You're certain, Strix. Certain. Oh. You hear the oozy crawling of mind flayer tadpoles. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she just um, starts screaming. She steps up, she's stepping on the on the deck, like trying to crush them. Down in the room where you all are, you hear Strix screaming and boom, 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 boom. Like she's clearly stomping on the deck and screaming. You all hear it. It's okay. She just does this sometimes. Oh, she does. You're sure she's okay? Oh, she's fine. She's totally good. That's normal. There's my players on Yep. Yeah, and there's my players. And, and, the, and, and the screaming is that's 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 it's okay. It's kind of her process. Yeah. It's how oh. she works through things. Oh, it's like when I scream when I'm trying to decide what to wear for the. Yeah, I get it. No, I got it. Yeah. We all have our things. Yeah. <laughs> They're in the walls. First, just yeah. smells worse than everyone else's. We, we scream different things, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Yes. Go ahead. Oh. I was just gonna say uh, that every time uh, Strix says something where it's like they're in the walls, Walnut's like yelling up the stairwell. They're in the walls, yeah, sweetie, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they totally are. Oh yeah, chalk, chalk a block full of them. Walnut agrees with me. <laughs> Walnut, mm -hmm. wild. You very much are just like yes, yeah, Strix. They're everywhere. You do hear a thumping noise coming from down the hall, followed by a a whining that sounds suspiciously like a living thing. Uh, even your uh, various assembled living friends now all over you just kind of like rotate their eyes that way and then like rotate their <laughs> eyes so up gross. at you, Walda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, sorry, so, okay, well, sorry, so Walnut is like, yeah, they're everywhere. And then Walnut goes, oh God, they're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she turns back to the, the group and she's like, uh gang there's something thumping around over here and maybe maybe related to strix yelling it's aliens i'm telling you it's aliens evelyn is her best friend space. are we not the aliens <laughs> <laughs> all of us are aliens if you really think about it i don't want to think about it that hard <laughs> yeah don't you see the captain does turn and look captain carstairs and she's like um most of the things that can murder you in space that sneak aboard your ship, wait till you're sleeping to kill you. So it's like... <laughs> so we're fine. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I hear that mind flayers abduct you in your sleep and take you onto their ships. Uh, uh, Did you just hear that like just now? What, what, uh, would you, no, would you no, I, it, it happened in Waterdeep. Uh, would you mind coming with me? Maybe we should like take a look down there because uh, Strix, because I mean, I saw what you did to those vampires and tell me, you know, if, if it's a bunch of mind flayers, can you turn them into sheep too and then throw them off the boat so that they'll like, uh, suffocate in the endless crushing void of space? Uh, it's it's harder because they can take over your mind and we might all be in their secret realm of pain already. Uh, my life's been nothing but pain. <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome to my life. It's I hope you like it here. Why are y'all even aboard this ship? Somebody go see what that racket is. All right, I'll go look. I I now have absolutely no sense of self self safety, and I just go. <laughs> As you all see Strix come down, and Strix, you see your friends all objectively beautiful and or wrapped in living things. Oh wow! And, and you see Strix wrapped in whatever she can find upstairs. I see no difference. <laughs> but that's it not true. No the hat's choice. shiny. It says no that's mind flayers. I heard that if you put the ship sail on your head, and because it's shiny, it'll reflect their mind beams, their blasts, their mind blasts. You know, that's, that's so great. You should definitely go first and check out what it is. It's, no, it's a thing, Virgil. Okay, but There's my question thing. is, Virgil, it's like, does it matter that the sail is now on her head and not it's on only the, a piece? I, I'm it's sure top. they don't need the whole sail. They probably don't need There's the whole thing. Excellent. The, the, the captain says, uh, there is no extraneous pieces of the sail, actually, and you might have put all of our lives in risk. That's great. Uh, but, uh, but Virgil and Kent, when I get my new hat, maybe I should try this reflective metal thing. Like, I mean, it's not gonna hurt. I mean, and like, I, it looks great. I mean, I, I want to say don't encourage this, but I'm actually kind of enjoying it a little bit. 
Yeah, I love your ideas and I'm taking them on board and making them a part of my process and my plan for you. So I hear that and I will, uh, I will incorporate it into the plan. I like your big hat. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Down the hall, all of you now do hear like something crashes over. And the captain's Uh, like, uh, hey, so again, don't freak out. All hands are accounted for. Don't know why there's a moving living thing down there. That's cool. Um, There are giant spider monsters that feed on dreams. Uh, Again, they come in the night. Uh, Nagalthu, they eat brains. They also come in the night. Um, Really, things only are terrible in the dark, and it's only dark all the time because we're in space. um, Hmm. That's not reassuring, is it? That part. Um, That part. Hmm. Well, you know, the morning Lord Lathander tells us that when it's dark, we need only look for the light that is within us, and then we will find truth, and the truth will make us safe. And she goes on and on until someone stops her. That halfling looks at you, Evelyn, and says, "Ah, sorry, I can't hear you over your outfit. It's a little loud. Thank you. (laughs) I like Walnut's outfit. It looks squishy. It's not an outfit. These are my friends, my only <laughs> friends. Can I touch it? Absolutely not. When Strix okay. points a finger, you do see the living things like part a little bit. To try <laughs> no, they should go like all the way to her back. <laughs> Strix leaves, they come all the way back. I love yeah. Yeah. She looks very crestfallen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, do we want to see if we have a new friend for my not outfit back there? Or Strix, I know you volunteered to go see what the squish sound I'm is. Gonna, I'll go see. I'll yeah, go see. At this see. point, I it's will... just gonna, apparently going to eat us or eat well, our dreams. Or don't worry. I'm not sure. That it's I'll, fine. Okay. I'll it's, turn it's, it. It's, if it's in our dreams, it'll take us and we'll not know that we're taken because that's how it works. Wow. Glad to have an expert on board. <laughs> I'm going to go with Strix. <laughs> I mean, to uh, be fair, Strix, usually you do know when we're in an illusion created by mind flares. So I did. My extreme like paranoia saved us. Gut. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if you don't think that, if you think this is real, it's probably real. All right. Let's go, Kent. Yeah. You and your big go. hat will make us huh. safe. Yes. The feather will oh. make tickle them away. Remember to duck. <laughs> Just remember I, to duck. I, oh, I do. God, yeah. Uh, do my gaseous form spell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? In that case, uh, Kent will use his ghost walk. Perfect. W- what does it look like when Strix turns into gas? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a, <laughs> just like, like, like a, like when you shake like a dirty rug, that's like it. Just like, <laughs> well, some of the pieces are bigger than others. And what does it look like when Kent ghost walks? Uh, this is like the one thing that Kent does that is actually kind of subtle, but watching Strix's version, uh, Kent just suddenly is like translucent uh, and incorporeal, but seeing Strix's flashy change, uh, after it's done, I go, <laughs> 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 You all watch the two of them just sort of be kind of not there and move, <laughs> and move out of the room. Uh, does anyone else go or the rest of you stay here? No. I'll follow Strix. Oh yeah, just follow. Yeah, just to just uh, to make sure. Uh, uh, trailing, trailing so far behind, being like Virgil, we could just leave. <laughs> you, you, you and I seem alike, cut from the same cloth. I might say. When you say, go? where are we gonna when, go though? When you say Virgil, we could just leave. Virgil, you see a number of these living things just sort of like and like look <laughs> towards the deck and look back at you like. <laughs> Because because they they are living things and now they are in they are akin in Virgil's mind to not quite but practically pets. Virgil will basically do anything for these creatures, and does the whole like. <laughs> oh, Maybe there's, <laughs> there's, all the jellyfish are so disappointed. <laughs> uh, Strix and Kent, both of you, give me perception checks. Yeah. Strix is also kind of singing, even though she's in gaseous form. It's like teeth and friends. I get a teeth and friend. I want teeth. <laughs> I don't have a teeth and friend. Teeth and friend. <laughs> I'm gonna start humming back up. Uh, <laughs> Twelve for Kent. Well, I got a, yeah. I got a ten. <laughs> I think I'm so glad the two of us went. <laughs> yeah, having fun. Yeah. No, you guys are having a great time making your yeah. way down the hall. Uh, 
you just start hearing non-specific noise. It sounds like something's alive and just a commotion, just screeching and hissing in in just chaos coming from the next hold over. Once you come out, you realize this room with all these clothing and things uh, was like a cargo hold. It's basically the next cargo hold over. It just sounds like all hell is breaking loose inside. But uh, unfortunately with the 10 and 12, you can't really place anything more than like something's going wild. Fair enough. Uh, door nearby? Yeah, there's clearly a door. Uh, I'm gonna walk float over to the door uh, and just sort of give Strix a one second and stick my head through the door to see what's on the other side. Uh, oh yeah, because you're um, uh, incorporeal. incorporeal right now. Yeah. Right? Um, when you look through the door, uh, the second hold has been cleared of cargo, making room for two dozen sturdy looking iron cages that have just been stacked up haphazardly. Uh, maybe they fell in the commotion with the vampirates. Four of those cages hold creatures that you can't quite make out. And the fifth cage has toppled to the floor and broken open, uh, allowing something very small about the size of a cat is flying around just in a circle. In like the noises you hear is from the creatures in the cages. Ah, uh, all right. So I'll pull my head back out. Uh, well, the good news is it's small. Uh, the bad news is it seems to have escaped its cage. Did the captain come with us? Oh, I guess we're just uh, next door, see, so we're right yeah, there. Yeah, you're not you're yeah. not far away. You see, she very much has hung back with a uh, Virgil and Walnut because if they're running, so is she. But she has <laughs> like pinked her head around the corner and is looking. Do you know anything about four four? living creatures in looks over at walnut in cages in here uh we <laughs> don't smuggle animals there's a lot One of money my question to be... but you made a big assumption well, okay <laughs> well here's the thing i mean we don't smuggle animals because it's wrong unless it pays well and then we would but no we didn't no interesting because the evidence is pointing otherwise and we're gonna have a long discussion about this she pulls her hand out with that mashed up manifest she had from last time. She's like, yeah. nope, everything that was on board the ship, no smuggled animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that there's no chance that you just didn't not claim the smuggled animals on the manifest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, wait a second. I'm not in love with your tone, okay? Because just because we're pirates and smugglers doesn't mean we were smuggling this, this time. I wouldn't lie to you. Great. Probably, okay. but no, I'm not no, lying to no you one, about this. No one's no one's saying uh, yeah. smuggled is a is a very strong term. Perhaps there are simply some cargo that you may be aware of that no one else nearby is aware of. Or or the low city magistrate was gonna use my sleek baby here to like start up their own smuggling operation because they didn't think I was gonna get my ship back because they didn't know that I would get you guys to steal it for me because you guys are awesome. Well, wow. if there's someone or something in cages, we should let them out immediately. Cages are a no-go for me. Yeah, I would just say as we yeah, go in like probably. keep low, it's flying kind of rapidly up at this level, just sort of by my head. Wait, Make it's sure flying it's in nothing, a cage? Make sure that nothing eats brains. A lot of things out here eat brains. A surprisingly high number of things eat brains. Actually, they're probably the number one consumed commodity out in wild space, actually, is brains. Strix will corporealize and tap the sign. Uh. <laughs> That's just good advice. I mean, I feel like if we can't all agree on no mind flayers, then what can God, God. I, I feel like I'm pushing past the captain at this point, and I'm yeah. like, uh, she very much lets you go. Yeah, like I don't listen to smugglers. All right, and mm -hmm. it just like walk um, right in the room, mm -hmm. trying to uh, ready to open cages. Uh, harsh, you've probably talked to lots of smugglers because most smugglers aren't like I'm a smuggler. They're just like, <laughs> oh, I'm a respectable <laughs> business person. Yeah, that's something a smuggler would say. Anyway, <laughs> your logic's unassailable. <gasps> <laughs> Walnut, you walk up to the door where um, you see Kent and um, Strix are there. And as you get closer, you also just hear these sounds and noises mm -hmm. uh, coming from the other side. Can I uh, try to speak with animal to these things? Speak with- Do you want to open the door first or do you just oh, gotta throw well, the other side of the door? Well, cause <laughs> well, he literally put his head through the door. Yeah, so I haven't right, opened right. it. It's <laughs> a closed door with a lot of noise. Sorry, it's really important that I open the door without any uh, care for the repercussions. <laughs> Got it. 
is you open the door, you see the scene as described. You mm -hmm. see four cages um, with four little pairs of, uh, of frightened eyes in there. And you can make out the thing that is flying around near the top of the ceiling is what looks like a little whale. It's got six glowing eyes and it is just flying in a circle. Uh, I turn back to the captain and I go, are you kidding me? Are you what? kidding I don't me? Know. No I mean, jail, I, just death for you. And then walk, it, <laughs> walk like into the room. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah, and you walk into the room. Yes. Um. So I believe this is, you know, a, a little. Walnut has a uh, run into Kendori before. Um, if, if Walnut's seen a Kendori, it's a baby Kendori, uh, yes. but a very small one. I mean, baby Kendori are still usually the, you know, the size of a small. Yeah. Boat. Uh, well, this one is is like again. It's not much larger than a dog or cat. Um, in that case, I'm gonna cast Animal Friendship, and I'm gonna try and convince this small little baby. I mean it no harm. The moment um, you do that, even without rolling, it just turns almost on a 90 degree angle and just runs into your neck and just like nuzzles there and is trembling. Oh, so I'm I'm holding this thing and I'm going, I oh, know, baby. And then I'm leaning out the door, looking at the captain and just mouthing like, I'm gonna kill you tonight. <laughs> tonight you die. Oh, baby. Okay, oh, hang no. On. Time out. Uh, if I was doing dirt, why would I have brought you down here? Think about this. Like that wouldn't be very good smuggling. Yeah, I didn't say you were good at it. Okay, Al, my whole plan has worked up until now. Okay. Like, wait, is that a Kendori? They don't, I didn't know they came that small. Well, maybe this one was malnourished from all the smuggling. It didn't have, it's, you know, got taken away from its parents too early. I don't know. Walnut, as, as you see this uh, Kendori here, there is a little name tag on it, and it says Bala, B-A-L-A. Bala. <laughs> Like, is this someone? When you, when you say Bala out loud, oh. I'm like nuzzles oh. against you. Oh. A new pet! I, I go, it would, I'm like, oh no, it would be horrible to keep this as a pet. And I'm like, I wonder Strix. if it can survive though. The moment you say <laughs> a new pet, you hear it. Uh oh. And a little piglet busts its head <gasps> out. It looks like a little warthog and it looks around and it looks at you and it shoots out of the cage and wings come out ah! and it flies straight up to you. It's like, wait, 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 Walnut, Walnut, look! Walnut, Walnut, look! This one likes me. It's it's Kuba. Look, it's good. Look! Oh my God! Where are these coming from? This is upsetting. Oh, this is the best day of my life. Pets are coming from all sides of the ship. It's so there cute are. and so small and smells so much. Captain, are you are you really telling us you had no idea? Yeah, I'm really telling you I had no idea. Funny enough, I do actually at this point believe her. She would have slipped at some point if she wasn't telling Aren't the truth. You you're not like wrong. You're not wrong. She's magical. actually not. Can't you like very... read my mind or something? I mean, I well, don't read it too close because you might find out the fact that I think the odds of this actually working are at best 50 50. You know, that's but, see, that's yeah, why we no. don't have to do the magic thing because, oh. yeah, no. oh, yeah. Oh, I was yeah. doing that internal monologue, external yeah. thing again, right? But you know what? It's yeah. helping you here because. Case in yeah. point, we would have found out if you were smuggling these animals by now. There you go. Yeah, yeah, no, you guys are like objectively terrible. Like I watched what you've done up until now. Like I wouldn't get killed over like a wing, a winged pig, a space <laughs> one. Wild. Wait, what's in the other cages? Oh my God, Kent is over there now. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you, yeah, this is Kent, more, yeah. <laughs> Kent, as you come up to this, inside of one of the cages, you see a pair of glowing eyes open and immediately a glow starts to form that you realize is coming out of the heart of a very small sparkling dragon. It is sort of <laughs> reddish orange and it doesn't have arms and claws like most dragon. Its arms go out into a pair of wings and a second pair of wings are on its back that it can't quite extend in this cage. It's looking at you. You 
clash perfectly with my new outfit and I must have you. When, uh, <laughs> now, Kent does not speak draconic, but you've been trying to pick up, at least learn a little bit, right? Yeah, we got a baby, we got a little wormling back at Troll Skull Manor in Waterdeep and we've been trying so hard to learn that thing's language. You, you see this thing looks at you and it goes, Daddy. <laughs> Virgil. You Come meet our child. Daddy. No. Daddy. There's just this look of shock and then he realizes, oh, right, a pet. Okay, we're good. Yeah, okay. Daddy. <laughs> It's um, saying daddy in Draconic. Yeah. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I am going to try to say yes in Draconic. I don't know what word's actually gonna come out, but it's gonna kind of sound like yes. Do you open the cage? Oh yeah. It flies out and lands on your shoulder and kind of wraps around your shoulders with its tail here and its head on the other side. And it's <laughs> very warm and it purrs <laughs> like a cat on your shoulders. And it turns and it looks at Kuba, the space swine, and it just goes, meat? Oh, and you see no. its eyes start to glow and the breath of its flame breath starts to form in its mouth. Meat. Meat. I, objectively, yes, but no, 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 no. We'll get you some meat. Don't, oh, don't worry. We could get something no much meat. less smelly. No, but soon. I visibly look mad. Uh, oh, no, uh, sorry. The, 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 oh, I'm going to cover his little ears. The smelly thing was a compliment, but not really his style. Fair and enough. You you see, like the there is a little name tag on this, and it says Photos, P H O T O S. Oh, Photos. Oh, oh. Daddy. Virgil, come say hi to Photos. Photos. <laughs> photos uh, meet Virgil. Virgil, when you hear Photos meet Virgil from inside of another one of the cages, you just hear oh. Photos. Blah also in Draconic. Hold that thought. Uh-huh. Virgil Ver 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 goes to, to check out where this where this other cage of voice is coming from. You see a pair of beautiful, piercing blue eyes as a small, very small, all of these are about the size of cats and dogs, even the, the space swine, which normally would be bigger, and the Kendori, which would normally be much bigger comes forward and it is an alabaster white dragon. And it looks at you and says, baby, better than photos. Photos. I mean, and you know, first in English, Kent would say that you do go better with my outfit than photos does. What's your, like there is this moment of what's your, and then it's sort of a sort of a sound between a squeal and Virgil just goes to rush to open the cage. <laughs> you see, it comes out very slowly and very gracefully. Like it extends its wings and just like very lightly flies up and lands on your shoulder and perches on your shoulder and makes a point of looking at photos and just kind of goes, <laughs> and tosses <laughs> its head back. And you see it has a name tag that says Tycho on it. Tycho. Just fanning it. Yes. Tycho, mm -hmm. baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Just a just a just a gentle kind of like stroke along uh, along its like neck and back. Yes. Yes, you you are baby. Photos <laughs> also baby, but maybe mm -hmm. you better. Maybe you better be. <laughs> you see Tycho's and Photos very much look at each other and are like, <laughs> and you see like ice start to form in Photos' mouth and fire in Tycho's, like they're about to fight actively. Oh, and I'm about to let him, but I guess we'll stop them. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, 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 I mean, no. Yeah. no, no. Sorry, no, yeah, no. Hey, Wait for when we need you, it. You sort just of a bit uh, later. Don't worry, Phobos. Push photos away, and photos just like, <clears throat> um, Daddy, meat. Hmm. Yes, let's go find you some proper meat. Evelyn from the last cage. Everyone's gotten their pets, so Evelyn's like. <laughs> 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 you hear a little noise. It sounds like. I bet 
cute, some cute little fluffy bird or something. It's so cute. I bet it's going to be so fluffy. And she goes and unlocks the other cage. When you unlock the cage, immediately something comes and bites on your hand, but doesn't hurt at all. It almost feels like it doesn't have teeth. Like it just sort of is like gumming on you. And it's like, oh, is someone hungry? As you pull it out, Evelyn, a creature unlike anything most of you have seen, you all are, are, are far traveled adventurers. It looks like almost like a brown slug, but it is covered in armored plates. It's got two arms that look like crab claws and its long body just almost trails off just kind of into nothingness. Like it just sort of gets wispy and it's only got one eye, but the eye is glowing bright and in the center of it looks like a star. It looks like the star of Lathander actually, right in the center of this creature's eye. Uh, Evelyn at first is like, oh, Fluffy. And then it comes out and she's like, oh, oh. Oh, and then she sees the eye and she's like, oh, and then she, <laughs> she takes like a little scarf that was some embellishment on her cloak. And she's like, let's just, just put that on. She ties it around its neck and like maybe puts a little bow, like just sticks it to it or something. She's like, that, isn't that better? As you put the bow on it, you see it does just sort of like puff its little chest out a little bit. Uh, and it reaches out with one of its little crab claws where the ascent, the symbol of Lathander's on your chest and it just sort of like gently touches it. <gasps> Do you love Lathander too? I love Lathander. We can be a Lathander family. Oh, and she you, snuggles it. You see it's got um, a name tag on it as well that says Treppy. Treppy? T-R-E-P-I, -T Treppy. Uh, now, all of you give me Arcana checks, if you would. Eight. Hey. 17 for Kent. 17. I got a also, 20. Oh, go ahead. Also oh, eight. I, I, got a, <laughs> I got a 27. Uh, Strix, is you were slightly distracted here, um, by all of this is your happy little piglet is sort of dancing around over here and just like, so cute kind of all over you flying around and helping get you delightfully filthy i'm and giving you, him snacks you turn the moment you start giving it snacks photos uh uh looks up and is like daddy meat <laughs> Ow! uh strix could i just just for now could i have just a little something I don't, uh, it's, I, I know fine. we got to train him off. Oh, we got to train him off. Of, I, know, I understand. I understand. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. But I pull out a, a, a single eyeball. <laughs> Perfect. You, uh, see, Kent is now going to spend longer than he should trying to train Phobos rather than feeding him. <laughs> Virgil, you see Tycho leans down and whisper, whispers in your ear, take photos, meat. <laughs> no. And uh, please take photos, meat. <laughs> Virgil looks to Strix and he's like, Ah, uh, fine. You know, if, if you keep giving them treats for my robes, they're just going to keep coming back for more treats. That's what happens every single time. I'm just telling you, it's going to be a pattern. And she hands him one. Yeah, you have to ask for them to do something. See, sit, Treppy, sit. Yeah, Virgil, it worked. As you take this snack, you see Tycho looks visibly disappointed. Uh, like, it's not the meat. It's the fact that it was taking the meat from photos. That was the real appeal of this. Um, Strix, while you're kind of reluctantly giving out snacks, it occurs to you in an instant, uh, Evelyn's holding a baby Astral Dreadnought. Like, you didn't know that Astral Dreadnoughts were babies. They sort of were like just the stuff of the astral plane made manifest. Uh, and yet, that's what it is. I walk up to Evelyn, I go, uh, Evil and I, you know, we usually come upon these sorts of terrible things in our adventures, um, but I'm pretty sure that that is a teeny tiny cosmic horror, something that should not be or exist in this plane of a plane. You, whenever I say that, I hope, you know, you take it to heart and just uh, make sure that it doesn't eat us. 
Ranch, you say that it very clearly starts just like gumming one of your pauldrons, Evelyn, just like, ah. The flame is just, just a hungry little baby. Might be from the deepest, darkest pits of madness. Just, you know, just as information, maybe light, darkness where the light from Lothander can't reach. There's, that, that was a joke, right? Because there is no place that the light of Lathander can't reach. That's a funny one, Strix. You're getting a real yeah. sense of humor. You, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Taps the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me tap my sign. <laughs> uh, as you all are, are here sort of playing with these uh, adorable new friends, uh, you see from behind some of the cages that have been knocked over, a very small figure pokes its head out that has, and it's only about six inches tall. It's got a face that actually looks like a mask with a pair of glowing white eyes and just wild blue hair that kind of goes in every direction. And it very slowly floats out from behind the crates riding a goldfish that is about the size of the rest of these things. And it just sort of floats towards the center of the room. And the captain says, Ooh, ooh, ooh. Does that mean this one's my pet? Do I get a pet too? And when she says this, it looks at her and it goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's oh, like, I love them. I love this one too. I'm going to call him uh, Poe. Them, her, it, they, I don't know. You're Poe now. And it just sort of goes. <laughs> so agreeable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just sort of floats forward on the fish and just like looks around at all of you. And the captain just says, well, I guess this means you guys are pirates too now because you robbed whoever's cargo this was. Hey, high fives. Everybody high fives. You can't rob live Agreed. creatures. We yes. didn't, we, we rescued. Right. Liber- liberated. We, we, we you know, yes, uh, yes. Well, a couple things, a couple things. Uh, objectively, you absolutely can rob and steal living creatures. But um, yes, you guys objectively, have rescued, liberated. Yeah. Uh, objectively, nah. <laughs> and when you say that, you see Treppy looks at her and like rolls his one eye and just goes, <laughs> you know, she's like, yeah. And she goes, um, these things, this like, um, what a fantastic convenience that there's five of you and five of them. And then I got like a little flying buddy here. We're full buddies now and that holds a hand up to Poe. And you see Poe sort of looks at her for a second and then just goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think that Poe is feeling what you're feeling. And they motion just right towards you, Virgil. And they're like, Mm-hmm. I got you. I get mm-hmm. it. They're just mm-hmm. not that into you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there. Yeah. It had to, somebody had to say it, and I'm glad this time it wasn't me. Yeah. Poe probably agrees that a living creature cannot be owned and therefore cannot be stolen. You see Poe looks straight down at the goldfish it's riding and then looks right back at you and goes <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn pays no heed to this. <laughs> you know, Poe uh, does not make a sound. The rest of these creatures are oinking and squealing and, you know, hissing at each other arbitrarily, as you see Photos and Tycho uh, very much like nip at each other's tails and stuff the moment they get within range. Uh, but Photos is, or uh, uh, Poe rather, is absolutely silent. Um, all of you give me nature checks, and Walnut, mm-hmm. you can actually give this to me with advantage. Wowie zowie. Mm-hmm. Five. Eight. You've successfully rolled the disbelieve. Yes, all of you are like, none of this makes it. You're just, I mean, come on, you're playing with babies. Yeah. I get it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a 16. 16. I got an 18. 18. Wow. wow. Um, okay. You know, Strix, <laughs> you know stuff. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, um, as you're sort of rolling around with your uh, foul-smelling winged pig here. Ha-ha, wee! <laughs> e, e, uh, Strix, you're aware of the, well, actually, I will say, Walnut, you're aware of the existence of Chewinga as, like, nature spirits. Uh, sure. But Strix, you know there's apparently nature spirits in space. Yeah, like we- a space Chewinga. 
We met them in Chult. There's look, that's the space version, Evelyn of the those things in Chult. Remember them? They were the oh. you mean the beings, the sentient beings in Chult? Yes. <laughs> You see, when when you say that, Evelyn, you see Poe kind of like stands up on the back of the fish and like gives a little bow. <laughs> Evelyn inclines her head. Yes, 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 Evelyn. As if we've never, ever, ever killed accidentally any sentient beings. When you say that, the captain goes, right? <laughs> Who's I'm like, among mm-hmm. us, Evelyn? Who's? Yeah. There's we were gonna, we were, hey, we were between... gonna eat Walnut's outfit. Think about it. Just saying. <laughs> It's not I'm an a vegetarian. Outfit. Thank you. <laughs> well, even sometimes a, a vegetarian. It's this really cool new thing in Waterdeep where you don't eat <laughs> any animals or anything that ever had a pulse. It's really trendy and no. also really healthy. Waterdeep yeah. thinks they invented it. We've been doing this for generations oh out in the woods. Okay, <laughs> listen. Just because you and the city discovered it. And a walnut is feeding one good berry to the kindori and then also eating it. <laughs> when you hear them say this, you see uh, Photos leans over in your ear and goes, no meat. Oh, right? That nonsense hadn't come to the northward yet. Just don't tell them. <laughs> I just, you know, sometimes it, if you're, you know, it's, sometimes vegetarian is, is a little bit elitist sometimes we can't afford to only eat vegetables so i'm just saying i'm just saying it's really important sometimes to understand that like some of us just have to eat trash or our, our hearts or whatever we find on the ground in the oh, streets the of sigil which uh, you know i consider myself doing a service to the realms by just eating things off the ground you are a paragon of recycling clearly yes Strix. yeah yes. um well, I tell you what, how about I get you guys to your quarters? I'm gonna have the crew sweep through and make sure there's no other stowaways or uh, stolen contraband or brain eating monsters. Make sure you look at the ceiling and in the closets. That's where the things that'll kill you in your sleep most likely to be. Um, and uh, you guys can get some sleep and we're just gonna roll out. We're gonna get the sextant. We're gonna drop you guys off and uh, it's gonna be all good. Um. Uh, Evelyn will lean over to Strix as uh, what was it? Teppy is Treppy. Treppy is gnawing on her pauldron and be like, "What do baby astral dreadnoughts eat?" I'm pretty sure that they eat uh planets or, and boats and whole whole adventuring parties. But I'm gonna say that uh maybe we'll try an eyeball. We'll say as. Treppy and uh, Kuba, the, the pig, is like happily gnawing on your robe as well, Strix. Like the two of them are just looking at each other. It's the rest of you just see goo kind of <laughs> drool coming down Evelyn's shoulder and on Strix from the pig, just sort of chewing on the two of them happily. I don't notice, uh, but I know Evelyn does, so I just press to digitate it every time for her. <laughs> and I'm Thank just you. like. Mm. I know that's bad for you, but if you need it, if you need that again, it's all right. But just make whatever this thing is happy because we don't want it to eat us. Well, it seems to like to chew on metal. Evelyn searches the deck for some like pauldron like thing or like, I don't know, some post or some something maybe even that's like hitching the sail. Evelyn, you very quickly find it will eat literally anything. If it can swallow it, it does. Awesome. Evelyn has a great time with this. Just <laughs> yeah. oh, look at this. Here. Yeah, like ooh, if it, ooh, if it goes in its mouth, it's down the hatch. Yeah. Great. Um walnut. Um you, this Kendori can eat a voluminous amount of good berries. Like one fills up a, an adult all day. And yeah. the, the whale just like keeps taking them. And oh, you just I- see its eyes just sort of like happily flash at you. <laughs> I'm loving that. And also the starry octopus uh, and the starfish are helping me hold it baby Bjorn style across my <laughs> chest. Um, and Walnut is just continuously making good berries and blowing as many slots as ne- spell slots as needed to feed this Kandori. And she's like, well... I say mission accomplished, and this and and this is what we came to do, and we're done now. Yes. Uh, the the captain's like, yeah, wait, no, we haven't done yes. any of the mission, but that's you know, okay, hey, again, you guys get some rag time. I'm gonna go jump on the helm. Everything's gonna be fine. I assure you, nothing ever goes wrong in space. 
and uh, I'll wake you when we get there. Can Who's I lying to us? Can I ask uh, one blatantly. question? I mean, blatantly. it's not lying when I'm trying to help you be able to sleep because if you knew, like, objectively, the voluminous number of horrors that could take your life in the infinite void, like, you'd never sleep again. <laughs> you don't want to know how much I have to drink to go to bed. So, uh, <laughs> let me just show you where your quarters are. It'll, I mean, you know what? You guys tell me. Do you want your individual quarters? Uh, we don't have enough rooms for y'all to have individual quarters, but I mean, you guys want to sleep in the same place. You feel comfy. You want some privacy. I mean, do you two lovebirds want to just be by yourself, but then you kind of got the dragons together? I don't know how that's going to work. Also, I'm pretty sure that dragon's going to eat that pig first chance it gets. Uh, you guys let me know. I, I make eyes with Evelyn immediately go. because I know she's going to scream sleepover. And she does. <laughs> <laughs> I knew oh it. God. Perfect. It, when I look to Walnut, I'm like, Walnut, join us. Oh. Yeah. Maybe the mission was the sleepovers we had along the way. Oh boy. Sure. Virgil Virgil, um so I think we're going to need and and looks at Cantu. Even though got changed, still managed to somehow take extra clothes from the clothing yeah. room. Yeah. I've been carrying them under probably, my arm the whole time. Yeah, we're probably gonna need our own space. Just it's, he, I'll, he, I'll he, hook he, you. He likes he likes to nest. I'll hook you up with the admiral suite. Uh, I'll catch some rag time with the crew. Uh, they'll like that. And hey, I'll make sure there's not a mutiny because at least I'll know, or maybe I won't know because I'll cut my throat first, but they're probably not mad anymore. We're back on the ship. We got away from the rock of brawl. They're fugitives. It's fine. They've been fugitives a long time. Anyway, uh, come on. I'll show you where it is that you, uh, you guys are gonna rack out. Or on Joel. the way, can Evelyn stop by the closet and find any uh, like baby sized items that will fit the astral dreadnought. And well, you have the advantage that it's got first. arms but no legs. It's like sweet pea <laughs> from the old Popeye cartoons. You know, it just trails yeah. off into nothing. So yeah, absolutely. Dresses, sleep yeah. shirts, tutus. Yeah. Like, yes. You know, oh no. You know, you know, yes, for, tutus. For, for the sake of the internet, what color pajamas do you put this uh, Treppy the baby astral dreadnought in? Um, it's like a pale pink with darker pink vertical stripes but with like silver metallic thread next to each pink stripe very like um posh sleep shirt and it has a little collar and like little buttons evelyn you notice when you pull out the pajamas with the silver threads in it like it's one eye widens like it goes out of its way to chew on the silver threads <laughs> um, it was like, oh you like happily. it that's great yeah. Um, um, also, Evelyn finds the closest thing to a designer tote bag that she can um, and puts the astral dreadnought in it to carry around. Oh my god, no. Very we stylish. Are, we are on the Beverly Hills of space now. Okay. I was about to with the Beverly Hills of space. <laughs> you can ride this, the subway this with is, it now. The there you go. Of yeah. It's in a carrier. Yeah. It so. It fits uh, inside, yeah. That's <laughs> true. This is, it is objectively legal. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, w I will just say, as an aside, all these names, Treppy, Tycho, Photos, Bala, and Kuba, and even Cilia, uh, all mean something, and they're all extremely deep cuts, and I'll be very impressed if any of you figure it out watching this, but they do all mean something. Okay. Uh, as they got, yeah, I'll just tell you guys, but I won't no. tell the internet because I'm a monster. Oh. Hey! Um, as they uh, take you all, uh, as she guides you all to the quarters, they are as advertised. Uh, they are fairly spartan uh but comfy you know it's like enough for you to if they've all it's like a um, uh, bunk beds rows of bunk beds they've all got the foot locker at the edge of it uh there is an adjacent room where you can see the captain usually sleeps uh in the next room over uh where kent and virgil can in the moment you guys come in the two little dragons fly off your shoulders and immediately land on the pillows on the bed and immediately start fighting over who's gonna get the the head of the bed No, mine, mine, mine. So much easier mine. with Fenris. Fenris just sleeps at the foot. It's so much easier. Get him, photos. Get him. <laughs> no, do not encourage Daddy, this. Sorry. Daddy, sorry. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Now I need to pull him off because now he's yeah. going to hurt him. <laughs> yeah. They're they're pretty evenly matched, but you yeah. notice as you as you pick them up, like they they have a little fiery breath and a little ice breath. Apparently, they say, <laughs> and as you sort of pull them apart, 
Um, That's not going to yeah. cause any problems. I love it. <laughs> uh, Virgil, you see the, the moment you were like, no, don't do it, and Kent kind of pulls it off. Um, um, Tycho just sort of looks at you and immediately is like, <clears throat> Tycho, good, baby daddy. <laughs> well, then, Tycho should prove that to Photos and set a good example. Meanwhile, Kent is whispering to Photos, <clears throat> Tycho, a little kiss ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Takes one to know. Yes, <laughs> sass. Oh sh- no, that's not. That's a daddy word, not a not a photos word. <laughs> he, Virgil, where do you want uh, Tycho to sleep? Because he does make a very ostentatious show out of what a good baby he is, and does exactly what you ask him to do. Where do you um, put him? <laughs> Virgil takes uh, one of the pillows from the head of the bed and actually puts it like above the covers at the foot, mm-hmm. and you know, since indicates like, you know, you were already on it. It's got your scent on it. Hopefully, you'll just stay there. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. See, Tycho immediately beds down, and uh, where do you put photos to sleep, Kent? Um, as far away from Tycho as I can. <laughs> He, Virgil, you very much see that Tycho like lays down like perfect baby, and but like an eye opens and like watches for where he is <laughs> the whole time. No, uh, it, excellent. Uh, where um, does Evelyn put Treppy for the night? Um, either. Well. She finds some sort of like um, crate and lines it with like plush blankies and makes like a little doll bed basically and puts mm-hmm. Treppy in there. Mm-hmm. Does you Treppy see, like it? As you go to uh, put it down, uh, it's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Like immediately, the what one a sweet baby. hits the ground. Yeah, and it is. Evelyn out. tucks it in with like a little blankie <laughs> and like gives yep. it, like goes like she's gonna give it a kiss on the face, but like hovers really close, <laughs> <laughs> and then goes to yep. sleep mm-hmm. with one and... hand on the crate. <laughs> uh, and Koopa the space swine Strix. Um, well, oh, impo- Koopa- it, Important point of clarification again. Strix is more than capable of prestidigitating and cleaning this filthy pig, does she? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Never. <laughs> right. No, she's going to sleep with Liv Kuba, just like squeezing him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like they're both yeah. just like, oh, like a stuff, yeah. like a stuffed animal, like as if she's squeezing, squeezing a stuffed animal's life force. You away. see just right where its little tusks have started to come out, just rivers of drool. Strix. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't Coming care. She's, a, nope. she's snuggling. It's fine. And then she'll just curl <laughs> up in the corner and be like, just just make sure that you have to pull the tinfoil or the, 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 the hat over because they'll get you in your sleep. Um, Hang on. Just one I assume here. that Evelyn and Strix are sharing a room if there's a, a shortage of rooms because Evelyn and Strix always. Oh, yeah. It's a sleepover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like walnuts in the in the in the corner with uh just like sitting up ready to do trance but like has has bala still in the baby bjorn and it's just like very quietly singing uh uh like a druidic lullaby maybe her mom sang to her and it's about like how the forest will like snuff out the you know rest of society and will cover all of the realm again and uh and then she like changes the lyrics halfway through to be like about the ocean doing that too so like maybe that's for bala anyway Although Aww. it is it is not possible to magically put you to sleep, Walnut, you notice as Bala kind of gets a little drowsy, like three of her eyes open and they start flickering in a pattern that does make you sleepy. It doesn't knock you out, but even like looking at you, you're just like, Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm ready to take advantage of the quiet time. Well, I gotta sleep, I gotta sync up the sleep schedules because when Bala gets up, I'm gonna be up, so. <laughs> that is true. Um, uh, then as all of you uh, bed down, um, the night is uneventful. 
uh, you get fully rested, and uh, Evelyn, in the night, you find yourself sort of standing on a windswept plain uh, that looks like along the horizon you can see the sun. It might be dawn, it might be dusk, it's hard to say. It's in my dream. You were on a ship. Now you're somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Hello? Yes. Hello, Evelyn. Hi. Hello, Theodore. And you know, I realize I've been a little more hands-on than... Uh, oh, my. Yeah, well, uh, this is a bit of a high-stakes mission that you're on. Mm. Oh, yes. Hi why? Why? Why are you on a high stakes mission? Well, I mean, why? Just curious. I know why it's high <laughs> stakes, but just I was curious if you wanted to uh, confirm why this one was particularly more high stakes than others. Well, I suppose it's been the fate of the world a number of times, but uh, this could be the fate of all worlds, Evelyn. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I mm. thought. So I'm glad we're and you on know, the same page. Here's the thing, Evelyn. You are as smart as you are fearsome. Yes. Thank mm. you. Most importantly, you never let me down, child. This is, is this just a dream or is this real? Like, are you? Because I, that's mm. something I would dream you would say. But... Well, the line's a hazy one. You know, they, they say if you don't know if you're dreaming, you should read something. The letters get all scrambly when you're sleeping. You don't happen to have a book on you by chance, do you? She reads one of her uh, swords because they all have inscriptions on them. <laughs> yeah. Checks it. As, as, as you were looking at it, you absolutely can read it. And he goes, I'm not sure. You just might have memorized those inscriptions, though. It's, that is a pickle. That's a pickle. Hmm. Well, I just wanted you to know, uh, you've made me proud as always. Uh, my light shines upon you. Please make a point to tell Strix. My light shines upon Strix as well, on all of you, really. I always uh, do. Yes. I thought about appearing in her dream as well, but sh her dreams, well, tend to include a lot of garbage. Um, and uh, she accused me of being a mind flayer last time. That's mm. a word, mind flayer trick, at least. Yeah, she's so. really into that right now. Yeah. Well, um, you find out the hard way when you haven't been concerned enough. That's that's, that's that. true. You're mm -hmm. not a you're not a mind. You couldn't you couldn't be a mind player, right? No, absolutely not. Would a mind player have this smile? No. <laughs> no, exactly. That's that's it. No, I um just one quick thing, Evelyn. Um, I don't want to make this um weird, unfortunately, but you should probably wake up because something terrible is happening. Uh, oh, oh, well, um, yeah. I'll miss you, and uh, uh, Dad, thank you. Evelyn, you can't miss me. I'm always with you. I'm morning lord, you know. That's, You're uh, so right. I, yeah, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> yeah, Evelyn, you come to, and <laughs> everything is shaking. <laughs> All over the place. I grabbed the baby. Might have, might have the astral dreadnought. Yeah, it, it is still... <laughs> <laughs> as you pick it up, like its clawed arm just sort of like drops out to the side there. Uh, I, and the whole I ship shake like, Strix. <laughs> ah! Strix first, Lithander says that he loves you and second, he, something's wrong. He's a mind flayer, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, Evelyn, you are aware of the fact that there is some sort of communications terminal um, on the wall there. You heard voices coming through it as the crew was communicating with each other previously. I uh, I have the astral dreadnought in one hand and punch it with the other. What's going on? Hello, hello, hello. Ah! Ah! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything? No, everything's fine. Uh, yeah, um, uh, hello. It sounds like there's an earthquake. But we're in um, space. There is no Earth. It, oh, no. Yes, it, 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 it's not a space quake either. Um, that's the good news. Bad news. Asteroid field, death might be imminent. Um, uh, I thought you were sleeping. 
Oh, uh, no big deal. We can we can come do some some target practice up on the, Strix, right? You and me. I love blowing I, things up. I, I, I'm so, sure that um Walnut can babysit. Uh, maybe don't freak <laughs> out. Um, but I'm gonna leave it up to you. Uh, if you think your friends would rather die in their sleep happily, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, if you guys want to help, maybe you should come to the bridge right. Oh, look at and it cuts off. <laughs> and you uh -oh. do feel the ship like. <laughs> like very much begin like roiling. I just puke immediately. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> walnut, yeah. Uh, uh, walnut, give me a dex check. Not a save, just a dex oh, check. You would. Okay. I would. Okay. Oh my no. My astral dreadnought jumped oh, right yes. into my arms. Oh. There, there it is. The, the, I, the, ironically enough, she also will eat anything that fits in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I got a 13. You nearly, you nearly dodge the baby, Walnut. But Bala, oh. Bala, Bala gets some splash. And just, oh. you see three of her eyes open like. <laughs> That's fine. I just, I just smear that off. Of, I'm also disgusting, <laughs> but just. I tell, I'd also tell Kuba to go, I'm like, go clean it up. Go clean up the. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Go clean up yeah. all the vomit. It's fine. Immediately. Oh, See? happily. They love happily. it. Yeah. Seeing that makes me do it again. <laughs> It'll just keep going. It's That's like when your dog say. does it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Except for Strix <laughs> encourages it. She's like, it's just recycling. <laughs> it's just, it's it's a good berry slurry on the floor oh. right now. <laughs> Virgil, it's a PG-13 show, so I'm going to let this one go. I could make it worse. Uh, <laughs> Virgil, <laughs> uh, while you're sleeping, you very much hear, excuse me, daddy. Excuse me, daddy. Ah, uh, what can? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have to go to break. I'm broken. Oh I gotta God. go. Oh I'm so God. sorry. I have to leave immediately. Oh that was amazing, God. and I can't do better. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Brian wins. Wins D and D. The wow. end. You won. That's it. Um, you know no, what? I, I am gonna go to break again. on that. I will. I will. I am gonna go to break on that. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Can't. But no, nah, we're going to break yeah. on that. We'll yeah. Be back. Yeah. yeah, bye. Don't go anywhere. Get ready for the drawing. Oh my <laughs> god. Hello and welcome back. Uh, as you all make your way to the deck, sort of bleary-eyed from sleep, I can't say that it is the morning because as you look outside, space is the same multicolored melange that, that it always is without uh, any particular source of daylight, not being particularly close to any stars. Even However, is the ennui. <laughs> <laughs> However, there is a churning maelstrom of light around you that is cut by a shifting mass of shadow ahead. Chunks of gleaming rock, the remains of derelict spell jamming vessels and clouds of glowing dust royal in a chaotic wash of movement that seems to promise certain destruction for any ship entering it. You all hear the captain's voice come over the comm say, oh, get ready. This is where it gets interesting. Um, this is where all the derelict ships are because they get smashed up by these asteroids. That's probably all right. And then her voice cuts off. As you see the ca uh, crew scrambling around all over the decks and that grumpy auto gnome stops and looks at you and says, do you intend to help or just stare? Oh, uh, uh, help, help, definitely help. Nothing. Uh, You've got a couple of options. There basically is a physical way that you can help with strength or dexterity, and then there is sort of an intelligence or perception way that you can help. So first of all, who wants to do strong stuff? Uh, um, physically get involved to help. S Evil. Strong and nimble? <laughs> I mean... Uh, de de there, there is, a, yeah, de dex okay, can, then, dex yeah, can help yeah. too. Great. Mm -hmm. I, I I was gonna throw my new sword or cast moonbeam, but if there is a strength thing, then I will always do that. Um, you see a lot of the members of the crew are running around and adjusting the ship's veins and sails, uh, physically shifting ballast sandbags and things on the deck to help the ship turn faster uh, out here in space. Uh, so Kent and Evelyn give me either athletics or acrobatics checks. Got it. Athletics is strength, acrobatics is dicks. 27. 27. I rolled poorly, 15. 15. Kit, what does it look like as you're gliding across the deck of this uh, 
fish-like vessel helping these people. Well, I only got a 27 because of the rogue's reliable talent. So I think it's sort of like autopilot for, I mean, <laughs> which which isn't to say that it isn't flashing extra, but like a little, like the face is not in it, right? Uh, right. So I think it's just swinging from anything I can grab, which is usually ropes and occasionally maybe another like crew member's arm as I sort of get to wherever I'm going. Uh, yeah. Uh, Evelyn, you are very much putting your back into it in helping here, but as you're moving around, Treppy is just not helping. Like, every time you go to push something, like, he comes out of his Bjorn and just, like, bites down on your hand and what you're doing is like, <laughs> and it's just in the way and underfoot the entire time. Happily. I, you also <laughs> mentioned him just being passed out and I was holding mm -hmm. him, so I would say alternatively, like, either he's just passed out being limp and in my arm and in my way, or chewing on something. You know what? For you, Evelyn, I'm gonna say, he sleeps through all of this. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically doing this in one arm. Perfect. <laughs> With this semi-unconscious astral dreadnought. The like, amount of times I have done this in real life, done something yeah. while holding a Pomeranian, is yep. not zero. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. You know exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, for the rest of you, uh, you see up at the front, some of the crew have like eyeglasses, spy glasses out and are trying to at least spot what's coming so they can kind of give the, the captain a heads up to like, uh, le uh, aft, um, port. I never get that right. Uh, port and stern. Port is left because it's four letters. I think that's correct. It. Yes, yes, correct. That is literally the only way I know this. Listen, the, when I worked on ships, that's how they taught us. So you good. Yeah. Starboard, <laughs> larboard, forward, aft, done. Why did it used to be called starboard and larboard? They hated people, I guess. They hated people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those of you that are going to try and go on scouting duty, give me investigation or perception. Got it, boss. I've never known why they say show me the larboard side on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You just taught me something. Is this the smart one? Yes, okay. because intelligence is investigation and wisdom okay. is perception. Oh, I guess, okay. Dang. So That's presumably everybody, yeah. ooh. I only got a 14. 14. On perception. Um, let's see. I got uh, twenty-one. Ooh. Um, on intelligence. Strix, as you are looking out there, and you're like, "Oh, I absolutely see it." You hear Virgil go, "Port, port." That's the right, right? Oh, and you no. see a piece of degree debris slams into the side of the ship, and you hear. That sounds bad. And all of you see it just bite a gash into the ship and the whole thing kind of lists over. Um, and that little halfling looks at you and goes, ha, 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 Mr. Virgil, whoa, um, I realize we're in space and there's not really an up or down, but um, uh, port is not the right, uh, it is the left. You can remember, because it's got four left ears. Um, assuming we're not all about to die imminently from catastrophic damage to the ship. Um, do any of you have any sort of teleportation magic? Like, if we could just go back to Neverwinter right now, we could just go home and it's like, none of this happened. That's, could you? I do a plane shift, but I don't think we're uh, supposed to do that because we've gone too far and the mind flayers already know we're here. <laughs> right. And you see his eyes just turn wide and he goes, yeah, anybody could be a mind flayer. Uh, okay. Uh, good news, bad news. Well, hang on, let me just double check something. Uh, okay, good news, bad news. Um, the difficulty was 17, and collectively you needed to beat it, and collectively you failed. Oops! <laughs> so, the ship does make it through, but makes it through beat to hell. There is a significant <laughs> gash down the side of it. Uh, Random bits of debris have punched holes in the sails. Uh, the the light fantastic was pretty pristine coming out of space dock. It actually looked better than you thought it did. Uh, now it basically looks like it's been through a hailstorm. Uh, Strix is like, do you think this is because I pulled some of the sail off? Yes. <laughs> that autonome just goes, yes. Definitely that and not me not knowing 
uh, port. It's definitely <laughs> yeah, the Ken, it's Ken definitely from across, sail. Ken from across the ship just yells yes because he can <laughs> feel from here, Virgil. Like it's, I know, I know it's been a while since you've been on board, babe. But yikes! Oh it's Virgil. Yeah, Virgil. I mean, but hey, it's space now. If you've been on water, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You you see Tycho just is wrapped around your shoulder and just leans in your ear, Virgil, and says, Daddy gave good instructions. Lady <laughs> turned the wheel wrong. Oh my god. You're the only one who understands me, Tycho. Well, you <laughs> Kent. well mostly you. Well, no, mostly Kent. You know, okay, you know what? Pretty sure that was my bad. <laughs> Strix, as the crew is uh, running around trying to uh, right the ship, because again, you all feel it listing, uh, listing here in space from the damage it took. Um, asteroids are floating all around you. And Strix, at the very last second, you see a pair of eyes open up on the asteroid ah! and legs come unfolding. I throw up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't do it. You're going to make me. So <laughs> 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 much and, puke and in this episode. Kuba just plunges down to the deck. We need more than I expected. Up. That's, oh, that's, I appreciate that's that. Kuba's here for it. Like, yeah. Uh, He's learned well. From the best. Unfortunately, Strix, only you see is a gargantuan asteroid spider unfold its legs and reaches out for the ship. Everyone else is occupied but you. And unfortunately, that means the spider gets a surprise round on everybody. I just scream, you. cosmic horror! <laughs> and I think that we're so used to hearing Strix say stuff like exactly. that that nobody is <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, cosmic yeah. horror, honey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In unison yeah. at this point. Uh-huh, uh -huh. cosmic uh -huh. horror. Cosmic horror, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even register. Horse. Uh, Evelyn, uh, what is your armor class? Double checking, but I think, yeah, 16. And Walnut, what is yours? Sorry, that took a second, 15. Uh, it very much makes sense that Strix starts screaming and you two in particular are like, we know, we know, and <laughs> lots of spider webs <laughs> land. <laughs> and hit both of you and yank you off the ship. Oh. You all see the two of them go and as you're hurtling towards this thing, you now realize it very much is real. Um, Kent, what is your AC? 18. Uh, you know what, Kent? You were doing such a good job being all agile up there and unfortunately Virgil was at the front of the ship. Virgil, what's your AC? <laughs> Thir Shut up, 13. <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> uh, you see as the entire ship sort of starts to, to drift towards this thing being uh, kind of yanked with the webbing as it pulls your two friends out a huge mouth comes down and bites down on the front of the ship uh, at the very last second Virgil you see Tycho look at you and go, Daddy, duck, and jumps off your shoulders as this <laughs> jaw comes down and bites onto you for 21 oh. points of piercing damage and 10 acid damage. Yikes. Not oh. counting any sort of mitigation. Let's see here. Uh, uh, what is, resistance is half, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you also Oof. see, um, the ship just sort of goes as you feel all the wet the webbing wrapped around it just starts pulling it towards this giant spider um strix you do get to take an action um before the next turn oh boy um well i know there's a hole in the ship i know that things are kind of messed up correct like i know that i know that they ran into some things uh the the ship is the ship is busted up before yeah. this ambush the crew okay. didn't didn't seem to feel like it was necessarily like dead in space it just was beat up it wasn't okay. uh yeah wasn't necessarily rendered uh rendered inoperable okay. although something's going wrong now because you notice it it does seem like the lights are flickering and things as the spider has it now 
oh, I don't understand space. So this is kind of <laughs> hard. So I feel like what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a wall of fire in front of the spider asteroid's face. Uh, I love her. a wall of fire. It we... has 120, fun, 120 feet range. Mm -hmm. um, it's concentration, and they need mm -hmm. to do a dex save 19. Um, um, it does look like the spider jumps back. However, how much damage does it do? Uh, 5d8 fire damage. Uh, go ahead and roll it because it might be important. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, are you doing it? Nope, it's not doing it. Hold on. I was trying to do it in on my character sheet because it's my staff. Mm hmm. Because I'm pretending that my staff isn't broken. Dude, I mean, you? it's not broken here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can have nice things. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm looking for it. Eh. It go. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. Yay! All right, I believe in it you. does 17 damage. Uh, luckily enough for you, uh, the spider jumps back and doesn't particularly seem um, overly affected by this. However, that is enough to burn up the webbing. That, that was had my your friend plan. To so, burn his and burn his face. Get away! <laughs> Walnut and Evelyn, as you feel yourself being yanked towards the maw of this thing, a wall erupts in front of you and burns up the webbing, and you drop back down to the deck, uh, rescued by your friend Strix. I go, there's no up or down in space. I don't know how it works. <laughs> uh, now, everybody roll initiative. <laughs> Can I use a can I can I use a free action to 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 set down the baby astral dragon somewhere safe? Setting down the baby is of course a free action. Just kind of like it just in a bunch of ropes that are just in rigging, just kind of there a little on the nest, deck. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it never happened. He just sort of like Or like wrote, in a barrel. Wrote, just, just sort of turns his head and just sort of like kind of idly starts to like chew on the nearest thing. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I got an 11 for initiative. Uh, 16 okay. for me. Oh, wait, hang on, sorry. You think I would be ready because I was the one that asked for it? <laughs> uh, never. Uh, I have never, never once been. called for initiative and been prepared to take them. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Evelyn, give that to me again, sorry. 16. 16. Virgil? Nine. Nine. A lot's happening, Virgil. You just got bitten by a giant <laughs> spider. Uh, the only one who's taken damage this entire adventure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kent? Uh, 21. 21, all right, Strix. Uh, eight. That's an eight. Oh boy. Mm. All right, and Walnut. Oh, 11. Uh, you know, but that's firmly middle of the pack. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> good news, bad news. Uh, <laughs> The bad news is the spider got a natural 20 on its initiative. Uh, the good news is that's not an attack, so there you go. Yeah, oh, actually, hang on, I apologize. Uh, Kent, what was? 21. No, uh, Virgil. Oh, oh. nine. Virgil, what was, no, what was your AC? Your AC. Oh my, <laughs> come on. Yes. <laughs> 13. Uh, it actually bites twice, Virgil. So it did <laughs> another 21 points of damage and another 10 acid, not counting any mitigation. Uh, but now it's his turn. So, hey, there you go. Um, and it had its eye on uh, getting a big old mouthful of Evelyn. So it's going to go for Evelyn this time. Actually, hang on. Um, before that, Strix, what is your AC? Uh, 18. Uh, it shoots one of those globs of web. It, you actually shoots two globs of web at you and misses with both Strix, Ooh. Uh, trying to reel you in. Um, I, I, I dodge. <laughs> <laughs> How, however, it is far more effective in attempting to bite Evelyn here. No, oh, no. Uh, having 18 on the die twice, and it has a not insignificant plus to hit. Um, so Evelyn, it bites you for a total of 42 points of piercing damage and 20 acid damage. So a total of 42? Uh, 42, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're uh, immune to acid, yeah. 
Uh, total of 42. Um, Virgil, you hear Daddy not the only one hurt. <laughs> oh, just oh, more, no. more, just mortified, just mortified. <laughs> now, uh, important <laughs> point of clarification. Terrific. Uh, un- unless something expressly happens to the contrary, you can assume that your babies are safe uh, and out of the fight. However, each of them have things they can do uh, that can help contribute uh, to the battle. So when it is your turn, uh, if you wish to have them do something, you absolutely can. Um, however, it is now uh, Kent's turn. Uh Kent is Kent has been having a grand old time. Uh, he's you know the photos and the everything is great, and then a big scary spider, which was thrilling until Virgil got hurt like more than a little, um, yeah. and now it's now it ain't funny no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kent uh, sort of grabs photos and and sets him on a nearby uh, barrel or crate or something, and just says, uh, "If you see the webs again." <laughs> and then heads off. You see, he just starts glowing with like this internal yeah. glow of flames and opens his mouth a little and you see them build up and he just like nods. Yeah. And he uh, looks up at the spider and he goes, spider meat? Yes, spider meat. Spider meat. Spider meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is by, it just bit Evelyn, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, is within, it is within melee range. Great. You might be hitting like at its legs and stuff, uh, because it's the size of the ship, but yes, you can Don't climb it, Kent. Don't climb it. Okay. Or, or, Uh, or, or, (laughs) but what if you did? Or do, yeah. So, um. Still only counts as one. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Okay, so I'm gonna run towards the front of the ship, uh, Mm -hmm. just to to make sure that Virgil is all right. And from there, I'll start uh, going at the legs that are closest to that part of the ship, grabbing on. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, one thing to point out here, please. Uh, Strix, although you were able to b- burn away the webs that actually were holding Walnut and Evelyn, the webs that are wrapped around the ship are not burning, which hmm. makes the deck difficult terrain. Uh-huh. Um, however, you still would be able to reach the spider because it basically is like wrapped around it now. Um, so you can do what you were intending, Kent. I just gotcha. pointed that out, that the, the deck is sticky and covered in silk. Ooh, okay, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and if I needed to, I could take a bonus action to, to dash mm-hmm. just to get to, to Virgil. Um, mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> I mean, a piercing weapon's not ideal right now, but we're gonna try and find a little, a little joint in that leg's carapace and just stab at it real good right yes um so that is a 232 to hit more than enough <laughs> yeah. um all right and if uh virgil is here with me then let's roll all the things all right that's 15 plus 15 plus 34 is 49 plus Sorry, I gotta find a better way to do this. 20 is 69, nice, points of damage nice. to the uh, <laughs> asteroid spider as I just find a joint in its leg and then start twisting once the rapier's in there. You hear a crack in the carapace in a very foul smelling liquid starts coming out of it and all of its eyes rotate towards you, Kent. You very much seem to have its attention. If I have even like five feet of movement left, I would move away from Virgil at that point with got whatever it. I've got left. Got it. It is difficult terrain, but I will say you yeah. can get more than five feet away from him. Okay. Uh, Just whatever Virgil, space I can put. Uh, I think you you had a note there, Virgil. Oh, I realized I was so reeling about the fact that I'm just getting like nommed on by a giant spider. Every melee attack that it took, um, I'm only going to do the, uh, oops, where did it go? Um, it takes 17 lightning damage for every time it bit me. Yeah. Perfect. Um, hey, if, and I, and yeah, that's that's just like take take if, it back. Just take it back. If, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna retroactively let it have its second bite, I <laughs> at least can let you retroactively have your lightning damage. So yes, as it bit into you, electricity crackles and flashes. Yes. Perfect. Uh, anything else from Kent? Uh, uh, besides moving away. No, just just trying to put distance. Evil. 
As you are standing on the deck there, you see your X, um, your rainbow X, seems like it starts to glow even brighter. And you feel Lathander's presence once again, saying, why don't we show this pirate crew how we do, Evelyn? Hmm? That sounds real good. Because, uh, as voted on by the good players of Vital Champions, somebody this week is getting double damage dice. Last week it was the rogue, so of course it's the paladin. Give that gets me the damage. Double damage dice. Yes. Great. Um, I also realized that weapon gives me a AC buff that I wasn't calculating. So my AC is actually 18 right now, and I'm if wielding it two handed. For what it's worth, I, I rolled twice and I got 18 on the die twice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, good. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe Evelyn didn't have the, the weapon out by that point. You know, that is true. Um, great. So it it just bite bit me. So uh, its face is by my face and I will put mm -hmm. my axe into that face. You know, I like your plan. Go ahead and roll it. Okay, great. I get two attacks. The first one is a 17 to hit. Um, sorry, I have a number of things open. Uh, 17 is enough. Great. Exactly enough. Then it's going to do... Uh, uh, why don't you give me the second hit first, and then you can okay. give me all the damage, because I know it is significant. Sure. Uh, <laughs> all right, second, second hit goes for a total of 25 to hit, so... Also more than enough. I assume you want to smite? I sure do. Uh, um, to be to be clear, you all gain the benefits of a long rest. You did have enough time to sleep before uh, all this went wrong. Uh, just give it to me when you have it, because I know it's a lot. It's going to take a, a minute of math. <laughs> yeah. thing, I, yes, <laughs> I, I too have paladined before. I know I know how this works. Um, while you see Evelyn, uh, well, actually, Evelyn, tell me, though, do tell me at least this. When you hit it and your smite goes off, what does it look like? Well, normally in like our home it's kind of this white yellow glowing like but here it's like a swirling rainbow effect um like like if you put a galaxy filter on evelyn's usual stuff that's like yeah that's what you it looks like. do see the crew um although these are clearly an unruly band of misfits they're not ineffective they very much are running around the ship doing things but they kind of can't help but stop and look well, as these like brilliant rainbow flashes are going off. Like a right. prism. Like, uh, do give me the damage when you got it, but anything else, bonus action or anything? Oh yeah, I can use a bonus action to toss my new sword in the air. The uh, sword of butthander. <laughs> the sword of butthander, yep. And uh, yell <laughs> butts, which is the command word. <laughs> that is the command word. Like that is objectively how that works. Yes. Uh, I'm very pleased. Just <laughs> give me, it, give me the all... attack on that. Uh, that is a 29 to hit. You know what? Because we're among friends, and quite frankly, if only to grief uh, the haters, I'm going to let you smite with your dancing blade as well, because it was a gift from Lathander. So there you go. Okay. So give I'll me your it. horrific voluminous damage when you have it. But in the meantime, Walnut, <laughs> it is your turn. Uh. So seeing all this go down, Walnut is just completely uh, taken aback at at, at, all, at all this, um, having been ripped up into the air and then dropped again. Mm -hmm. um, and almost at a reflex, uh, it, like 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 one would sneeze. She casts a uh, moonbeam at mm -hmm. the to the fifth level at this thing. So we do uh -oh. like. Uh, I was going to ask what the save is, but it's a two on the die, so it's probably not going to make it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it did not make it, so then I do yeah. get to roll 5d10 on damage for that. Um, but I would also say, I don't know how the pet action works. I'm going to assume it's like a bonus action, DM be so nice. Uh, so I would love if yeah. the Kindori also gets startled and does their little flashing thing. You absolutely see uh, Bala looks at this thing and looks at it head on, and she is a very brave little Kindori. And you do see her eyes start flashing. And as it starts flashing in this strobe pattern, you do see the spider like kind of looks at her, but looks looks at her, looks away, and, like is very much distracted by this. 
uh, incredible. I also rolled maybe the worst 5d10 roll of all time and just got a 19. <laughs> that is rough, actually. But the moonbeam persists, does it not? It does. Yeah. It's, well, it's uh, just yelling the whole time. Oh. You do see the light coming down on it, but this thing looks like it's made out of solid rock walnut, and it doesn't seem quite like it's burning as much as you would think. Maybe it's because it lives in space. Who can say? Uh, anything else from walnut? No, just that radiant failure. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil? Oh. Um, yeah, Virgil um, looks... <clears throat> it essentially is not looking great but kind of steals himself uh and and just yeah kind of points a finger at the uh the asteroid spider and casts lightning bolt but kind of harnesses some of the energy of that acid and uses a sorcerer uh, uses a sorcery point uh to change the uh to the damage so it's more of a sickening green lightning bolt that is a uh deck save dc 18. um you is you see the lightning sort of crackles around you um tycho floats up next to you and says tycho help and for a moment virgil just kind of smirks and says that's photos is neat you see it looks over at photos and looks and says tycho take photos is meat Ah, and the frost comes out and it breathes a cone of ice over it. And although this dragon is small, you do see frost start to form on the leg of the spider. Like it's slowing down. Um, what's the uh, deck save on your lightning bolt? 18. Unfortunately, 18 on the die again. So it is Ooh, going to words. make that save. Okay, uh, that's gonna that's gonna be half uh, of this. Though. Evelyn, are we still doing math? I'm on the last set of dice, so yeah, we'll have a total in a moment. That's a lot of dice. Yeah, it was. I had to add a, a voluminous amount of dice. Yes. Oh, and I forgot to double those ones. Well, you can just take the total <laughs> love and double it. I love that it. Will, uh, if that's easier. Well, I had already doubled the dice for the. There's so literally, I'm like, okay, here's the damage for the attack, the approved di divine smite, the damage for the sword attack, the improved divine smite for the sword. The Divine Smite from a third level spell slot, which is 10, so 53, but then that's again four more D8, so mm -hmm. that's it's, uh again. I, the only the, the the worst pain I've ever experienced is having a crazy smite like this, and then like later that night being like, I left out four D8. Ah, ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, ah. so uh, uh seven eight nine well virgil plus... did you give me the oh. lightning damage sorry uh yeah that is going to be uh 18 uh acid damage her is that accounting for the fact that it made the save or no yes perfect okay you ready yeah 104 radiant <laughs> <laughs> evelyn you smash into this thing and the light erupts and you crack through the asteroid down to the spider meat underneath. And you see it looks at you with horror in its eyes, the likes of which it has never experienced and immediately lets go of the ship and is trying to leave. <laughs> um, important point of clarification, Strix, because it is your turn. Do you let it go or do you light this thing up? Because it is oh, clearly very grievously wounded. <laughs> no, no yeah. I, I light it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We we don't make that mistake anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's that that is the way to get them to come back in the sequel. That's true. Uh, what would you like to do, Strix? I will just uh, fireball it as it leaves. <laughs> yes. Just a. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, it very much does not make the save. And you see as it is trying to go, um, it is simultaneously confused by Bala and slowed down by Tycho. They they are helping. <laughs> um, Good. Yep, uh, go ahead and give me the damage. It does not make the save. Soften them up for you, Strix, get them. <laughs> it is, uh, I only did fifth level, fifth level, so it's 35 only. <laughs> 35 points of damage. Uh, you, <laughs> I have to point out, that leaves it with 69 hit points. Nice. 
<laughs> um, uh, I'm also trying to burn some of the web off too. So, yep. uh, you see, is is you hit it with the fireball and it's turning. You actually see the weapons of the ship finally coming around. The ballista and the crew start shooting here. Oh, about rather, time! Rather effectively. <laughs> And the spider just sort of starts to drift slowly away through space. And you see uh, Photos sort of floats up to you and she goes, Meat? Well, I guess we had to figure out if you can fly through space at some point. Meat if you can get it. <laughs> meat. <laughs> and you see she does fly and can live in the vacuum of space. Oh my, oh my god, there's this moment oh. when she gets okay. to the edge of the air sphere uh, that I'm uh, like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Yeah, remember the chickens. Remember the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but she does fly and very much happily starts eating uh this asteroid spider. Okay, but bring it back. Off. Bring right. it back though. We got, yeah. gotta come back. You, you do um uh Strix you see uh, when when she flies away, Kuba looks and is like, wah, 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 wah. I mean, I don't know if you can breathe in that, but if you can, you go ahead. You see Kuba takes <laughs> off happily going and pierces the air envelope. It's like, wah, wah, wah. is it working? Nope. <laughs> oh, no, come on, sorry. Oh, no. I'll, get on my, so I'll get on my, my staff turns into a broom. So I'll get on my broom <laughs> and fly up and, Rescue him. Yeah, you do very much pull it back into the air ball. And I'm just like, you can't breathe in space. This you almost died. <laughs> so, I, please tell me the little pig hands are like shrugging. Yeah, a hundred percent. And immediately goes back to trying to figure out how to get up there no, and eat some of this spider. No, no. Yeah, there's. I'm like, sure there's some vomit on the deck. Go down on the deck. <laughs> and it does fly away. We eat garbage uh, in this house. Go, go, go. Uh, you see the crew just sort of slowly approaches all of you and like, they're just like thumbs up and high fives. Cause the first time they properly saw you all in action. Cause you kind of smoked the vampires. This time they saw you get to do what you do. I did this um, much math. Oh my God. That's that so much math. math. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nope, 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 nope. <laughs> See, see, I'm, I'm, I'm of the, you know, roll 62 D8 and D&D mm -hmm. Beyond school. <laughs> and, like, yeah. crash the machine with dice I had there. to label it with mm. what I'd already done because there's so many different <laughs> things I was doing. I couldn't remember which ones I'd done. I, again, I know the unique pain of forgetting something. Uh, the ship is, again, fairly damaged, unfortunately, but does manage to continue limping through space. And then you see a break in the asteroid field's dust cloud with the shards of an astral line shine forth to backlight a sinister shape. A derelict vessel spins slowly within a shroud of dust and debris that orbits its twisted asymmetrical hull. Broken mass twist together like shattered tentacles, the shreds of sails rippling as though caught in an unseen wind. Just to confirm, there is no air in space, right? Correct. There is air around the oh, ship. Sorry, um, that was Kent asking. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, well, yeah, right. Just to sorry. confirm, there's yeah, no air, the so wind is, like, is not a thing, right? Yeah, no, at all. Yeah, I, unless it is. So. Love this ship. She's extra. Look at her blow. Look at that. That's, you know. Are we, uh, are we sure the ship isn't alive? We were just attacked by an asteroid. Listen, yeah. if she is, she's extra. <laughs> uh, we, we, we don't need another ship. We have, I don't think, we have ships, ships at, at home. home. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, but is, what you if, come, is you, oh, sorry, Strix, what were we going to say? Oh, say, but what if there's survivors? Oh, we have to go save them. <laughs> oh, thanks, no. Strix. Thank no you. Strix. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. I can, tell. I can just feel. Evelyn, as, as you come back uh, and pick up Treppy, you hear he's singing a little song. He's like, <laughs> that you all can hear. But I, I should I recognize the melody because we couldn't really hear the melody from you. Oh but. no, I'm sure I did it very poorly. It's no, just, no, it's just we like just a, couldn't like a, hear the mic. Didn't pick it up. Um, yeah, oh, Zoom right. doesn't I like it. Yeah, Zoom's like you don't need to hear any of 
was <laughs> clearly what we did here. Just yeah. like a little, just like a little trilling song. Aw. Still very much asleep, but singing this little trilling song. That's nice. on top. Look, he thinks in his sleep. Isn't that the cutest thing? <laughs> that thing is a cosmic horror, evil, and if it's happy, we're not happy. The... Are you saying that my child? Oh, here we go again. <laughs> makes you unhappy? I'm sorry. Did, as, did... as Strix's child is happily sopping yeah. a vomit on the, yeah. on the deck, the vomit and spider webs on the deck of yeah. the ship, and you see it sort of lifts its head and kind of like a like a German shepherd eating peanut butter with the spider webs. Like Evelyn, <laughs> look at look at my, look at look at look at <laughs> Kuba having a nice time. How many times have we gotten a pet and it's hurt us in the end, and or has become a permanent fixture in our party when it was a dart shooting doll? And look, uh, that dart shooting doll is also my son. Excuse I know. Me. And also, everyone was like, you can't adopt an owlbear. It'll maul you in our sleep. And now we have two. And you would never trade them for anything. So I mean, that's true. But and I like look at the cosmic horror and I'm like, but that thing's making a scary noise. You call that a scary noise? It's objectively adorable, Evelyn. <laughs> Strix. <laughs> It is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> He's I like... making a joyful noise unto Lathander. Uh, have you? Well, you can ask him about that in your free time. I will. You hear the captain just says, "Well, I'm pretty sure I can get us close enough to board. Uh, not sure. Helm's being a little sluggish. Don't know why. Maybe a massive piece of metal raked against the side of my baby or whatever. But um." You guys, hang on, get ready. And she pulls up next to this odd ship. And as you feel the air envelope sort of intermix there, it smells terrible. Strix, even you don't like it. It Yay. is death and decay and just stagnant in all of you gain the poisoned <laughs> condition unless you're wholly immune to poison. And I you have disadvantage on attack rolls and no. on ability checks as you just feel gross as the air just sort of intermixes. And the crew clearly is like, ah, ah, oh, uh, I just, why is it just gotta be on my last mission that I'm gonna get poisoned to death and eaten by a spider and pirates, vampires, oh. It doesn't smell like there's survivors. <laughs> I'm going to agree with you on that. And also no mind flayers. <laughs> I am not immune to poison, I'm immune to disease. Mm. Mm. And for mm. you all, you just feel terrible. Just the moment you smell it, it's just like, ugh. Oh. As you all um, look across, uh, it is about 30 feet to the deck of the other ship. And you hear the captain's voice come over the comm and says, so we should probably um, stay over here in case more spiders or mind players or ghost ships or um, uh, we, Yeah, we clowns. got it. We, yeah, There's it's a good. lot of clowns. Oh. Okay. Yeah, no. That's yeah, what? no, I, I, no, no the, the clowns are the worst. Um, so yeah, you guys find the sextant. Uh, it's gonna be near the spell jammer helm. Uh, it's just like mine. You've seen it. Uh, probably. I don't know. I never been aboard this thing. Hey, um, what kind of ship is that? And as you look at it, it is shaped like a very, like it once was a beautiful gossamer moth, complete with wings, but everything is twisted and bent in a way that like shouldn't be possible like it should that shouldn't be able to connect there and like you know wood and metal don't warp like that it just seems twisted anyone because... anyone need rescuing over there i don't think sound travels through space but you know keep yelling our inter our maybe the, it does does the, it <laughs> the air intermingled they should be able yeah. to hear us, right? Yeah, it did. Well, we, I mean, if there's any, if we can smell it, then they can hear us. Oh, that's a good point. Never oh. thought about that. Wow. I, I want to <laughs> stop thinking about it, actually. <laughs> yeah, good on that. It's like the this sight line rule. If they can see, you can see them. If we can smell it, they can hear us. Yeah. The um, smell is mm -hmm. so bad, it's loud. Could I? <laughs> Ears are ringing. 
If Strix thinks the smell is bad, it's bad. Mm. Uh, could I do, yes. could I do a thing? Almost certainly. I will um, just say before you do that thing. I won't. Uh, no, you're going to get to do the thing. No, this, <laughs> this isn't something bad. This isn't something bad. Um, no, I'm like, this one time I would warn you if it's something bad. Strix, <laughs> you see Durs, that Hadozi, hmm. again, sort of flips down from the rigging and he just says, hey, hey, hey. Eh? What, yeah? I won't let him leave you here, okay? Why would they leave me here? I mean, I, under different circumstances, of course, I'd be like, get these weirdos off on this boat and let's go. This is a suicide mission, but I'm not going to let them leave you. I got you. Can I insight check him again? Absolutely. <laughs> suspicious. Suspicious mm -hmm. again. Okay, this one's better. This one's better this time. Uh, that is a 17. It, you learn two things. Uh, he's not lying. He's not going to let you leave. Let them leave you. But you all also right. detect nothing from the crew indicating they're going to leave you. Right. Like, so they're, they're all working to patch up the ship and fix right. things that have gone wrong. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm just like, okay. I think I see a kindred spirit here, and I'm just like, just so you know, too, don't don't drink the water because mind flayers put fluoride in it. <laughs> because the tadpoles live on fluoride. Oh. We gotta wake up, right? We gotta wake up. Yeah, and he just like shimmies back <laughs> up the rigging. Oh. Make sure to make yourself a hat as he leaves. <laughs> uh, 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 the again, to, uh, yes, walnut. Your thing. Oh, my thing. Uh, my thing was that uh, just being like, all right, well. It smells like death in there. We just need to go find the spell jamming helm in in and out. No clowns. Easy. Um, and she will wild shape into um, a weasel. She's a tiny little weasel. Which, mm -hmm. um, oh, in the Kindori. Oh, you know what? Then the weasel has like a little piece of twine uh, like around it, like a little dog harness. And it's just mm -hmm. tethered to the Kindori like a little balloon. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> And I would like to do a perception check based on smell. Uh, is is your intent for Bala to fly you over or just to not lose her while you're doing this? Yes. Because she could. She can fly in space. Y yes. Yes to both. Yeah. Uh, I'll do you one better. She can even take like a length of rope in her mouth and fly the rope across too <laughs> when both of you uh, go over. Um, what is it that you are trying to figure out? Uh, I just want to smell if there's I smell death, but I want mm -hmm. to smell if there's anything alive. Uh, give me a perception check. Yes, which I have advantage on because of mm -hmm. this. Because of the weasel advantage. Advantage. Very fancy. Very that's, fancy. That's, that's from the sparkling weasel of uh, region. <laughs> 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 of, of the astral God. sea. Yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a chonky 27. Mm. Um, you don't smell anything that you recognize walnut but the number one thing that you smell is this is just wrong like you're a creature of the forest you're a wood elf this is just none of this should be it just is everything that you know and expect is just taken and kind of turned 30 degrees it's just it just hmm. non-specifically it just smells wrong I at he, smelling that, I would climb up the little rope and I am just like, uh, you know, like dog sploot. Like I'm just spluted <laughs> on top of Bala and I'm just, I'm looking so nonchalant. Like I'm like, I'm not even here, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, uh, that was it. Do you guys take the rope across? Uh, yeah. I, I think ever since we got into this debris field, the uh, historical and archaeological possibilities have got Kent just like counting papers <laughs> he can write. So as soon as we have a rope, he's across. Uh, I'm uh, going to fly on my broom so I don't have to touch the rope. Between the rope uh, flying in every other way you all have to get across, you are able to get over. Um, however, Everything, again, the gravity well of the ship is unstable. So it's going to make all of this difficult terrain. Um, so if you try and move too, uh, too fast here, it's going to give you some uh, penalties. And recall that you're already disadvantaged from just being sick. 
The whole of the derelict is covered with raised round protuberances six feet in diameter that resemble blisters of cloudy glass. Uh, you see as you come over, um, Kuba, the pig, immediately runs right over and just headbutts one, and it just <laughs> vanishes, and you see a portal, not the pig, the protuberance, oh. um, uh, disappears, and you can see a portal opens down oh. into the ship, but it goes down to like a twisting network of circular tunnels, again, that don't connect in a way that they should. They just, everything is just sort of irregular and jagged. And it feels like the ship might actually fly apart at any second. You hear like this grinding noise uh, coming from everywhere and nowhere all at once. I see the portal and I'm like, Evelyn, we have portals, that's bad. Why? <laughs> I'm just, they're like, it's like Sigil, you know, portals. Portals appearing is bad. It, the portals outside of Sigil is worse. Portals in space is ultimate bad, super worse. So don't go in the portals. I mean, we should go in the portals. Oh, okay. <laughs> the moment you say we should go in the portals, Kuba just dives in. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll just... Uh, and yeah, you my... hear this echo of him going in. Oh, of course, no. I will save like... any animal because that is what I do in life. And I will fly my broom following Kuba because and then I'm like, no, little stinky man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here is how we're going to do this. I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to do three group checks. All oh of you oh, give me God. Arcana or investigation. Oh, no. We're going to oh, do it I three suck, times. Just give, give, me, give me the one first. I rolled in at twenty. Wow. Hey. You know uh, what? I'm, I'm gonna give you a group win for that. There you go, because Lathander has smiled on you. Oof. So I, I, heard, I heard some ums and uhs there for some of those rolls. So you don't have to tell me what they are. Give it to me again. Arcana or investigation. Right. This is the second time. Mm, good fail. Oh my god. Oh my god. I also got a one. Oh my god. You know what? I, We're gonna I was, die. I was like, I gave a 20, I'm gonna take a one, and then I was like, no, oh, I won't do that. No. Two ones. Two ones you gotta take. Group fail. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, Again. Kent we and Walnut, the drama. Uh, you all are making your way through these twisting passages. Absolutely certain where you should go. It is not where you should go. <laughs> so, last <laughs> one. Group check. Here we go. Kent definitely makes that worse by insisting, even after he knows it's the no, wrong way. Kent, hundred percent, <laughs> obviously. Why, why, why wouldn't you go through that one? Exactly you right. Know, the portal is like vaguely shaped like a mouth. Yeah, go in that. Yeah, way. go that way. Uh, Arcana or investigation? Give it to 18. me again. Eighteen. Also eighteen. Eighteen. Five. Five. <laughs> I got a twenty-two. Twenty-two. <laughs> Virgil. Luckily enough, it was 16 and more than half of you made it. So <gasps> it takes a long time <laughs> <laughs> coming through this ship, arguing with each other because you're like very clear that like, no, we've got to go this way. Even though uh, Strix, Evelyn and Virgil, eventually you kind of catch on to the fact that you're like, I really don't think that's, that's, not, that's not, you know? Uh, until you come through the circular tunnel you move along opens into a large round chamber with multiple tunnels leading off of it. Oh, Floating no. at the center of the chamber is a half dome scribed with glowing sigils, sigils actually, not the city, ah. sigils. <laughs> it's just old ah. sigils. Shape like, and ah. form, <laughs> whose shape and form shift constantly. Irregular protuberances stand out along the surface of the hemisphere like cysts, one of which is glowing and sounding out a faint scratching. As you can see, it is floating in the center of the chamber here, and there are cables coming off of it attached all over the room that appear to be crusted in mucus. And oh. you can see the spell jammer helm here looks like it was built for an extremely non-humanoid creature, which is weird because this is an astral elf ship, but no astral elf was sitting in that chair. Huh. Uh, is that no. where Mind Flayer sits, I Strix? Maybe, oh. Mind Flayers. Oh, oh, don't, 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 don't. I, I, can I Arcana check this? <laughs> you can. Because I don't think it looks like a Mind Flayer, but they can be anywhere. That is, can no, be anyone. Objectively, <laughs> yeah. Like, 
Everybody knows that. Wake up, sheep. Yeah, wake up. Yeah, that's uh, so <laughs> twenty-four. This is not mind flayer. Somehow, this is something worse. Ah! <laughs> well, come on. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I, I, I whisper. It. I whisper to Evil, and I say, "It's some. It's something worse." I think they put something in in our in the potions to track us here. Oh no! I, you I, see. The protuberance bears a hard shell of what appears to be black iron, scribed with sickly sigils glowing blue-white. Uh, oh no, sorry, I already told you that. I apologize. Yeah, it's connected to the chair. So why doesn't one of us sit in the chair? I'm okay. not sitting in that oh. chair. Oh. No. Evelyn, just... do you sit in the chair? No. I at least start walking no. over the chair. No, no, Let's try it. No, I can no, pull you out. No, no, no. Why not? But we're, okay, but we're here for the for the for the what are we here for? A book? A we're something? here for the thing. The, like, the, oh, the sextant. The sextant. We're here for the se- sextant. That's <laughs> mostly what I said. Oh my god! But look at that chair. It's pretty neat. Uh, Walnut is screaming at doing? Evelyn, but is uh, a weasel. So you just hear uh, and is covering the Kendori eyes with the little weasel hands. So you just hear like. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, need, I need weasel walnut going forward. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it's here, and I'll never drop it. So, there you go. so this is we're we're here to get something that's in the control room that's not the helmet. This you, is the only other thing in here. <laughs> Again, just like why are you doing this? Strix is like I don't know. This is just how I am. Well, I mean, look, that's fine. <laughs> you know, we know ourselves. Let's you know. You all have a few <laughs> options here. Things you can try. You can do Arcana. Investigation, sleight of hand, or athletics. Mm. Mm-hmm. Whichever I'll one take you athletics. like. Athletics. Athletics. Uh, give me athletics, um, Evelyn. Thirteen. Uh, Evelyn, you're just like. I mean, I could probably just grab this thing, um, but you really you can't move it. It's kind of like very securely attached. Oh, like seeing, it might be possible to force it, but you seeing can't Evelyn have trouble with it, I'll go and do an investigation and sort of just I, because if we can answer questions before she sins, yep. so much yeah, the better. Investigation, like I said, you can I, I, each of you give me Arcana, there Investigation, Sleight of Hand, or Athletics. So give me Investigation, Kent. Twenty-one. Um, you think as you see some of these cables, you could probably figure out how to turn off the power. That maybe that might make it easier to unhook. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like, eh. and Kent, this shouldn't make sense. It shouldn't no. make sense. No. And yet you're like, no, but I get it though. Like, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You just got to follow the mm, tentacles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. uh, Virgil, uh, again, Arcana, Investigation, Sleight of Hand, or Athletics. That's a 14 Arcana. This doesn't make any sense, Virgil. Like, can't stop. Thank, that's what I've been saying this entire no, no, time. You're, you keep missing Nothing it. Just follow, watch, watch my finger. Yes, it does. Yeah. Watch my finger. <laughs> yeah. Watch. Nothing. You see where it goes. And then see there where it splits. Yep. See? Just like that. Uh, Walnut, same thing. Arcana, investigation, sleight of hand, or athletics. I got a 15 to athletics to chewing on the, wo- <laughs> the wire that Kent's pointing to. It can't make sense. You're like, no, if we break this one, yeah, no, I, I think we're going to be all right. Like, again, you're a weasel, but you're like, you're, you're, you're completely picking up what Ken's putting down. Absolutely. He's right. 100%. Chew through that wire and we'll be all good. Um, I, I do it. Strix, you're the tiebreaker. So I roll in. In, Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to do Arcana. I rolled mm-hmm. a nat 20 and plus my bonus, it's 29. Ooh. Um. Hmm. Kent's a hundred percent right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's it, truly yeah. though. I did need all of you to confirm because Lord knows I could yeah. have been wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Convinced, it, but wrong. Between uh, all of you, you do uh, reverse the polarity since you know can't you never go wrong with reversing polarity. <laughs> That's it. Um, and the cables come off and begin lashing like they're ah. alive, reaching around um, for something, and so they worse. reach out in one of the tentacles hits weasel walnut no! yes um no walnut what when it <laughs> hits you sure. it feels like nothing like it feels like anti-life like it would be inaccurate to call it cold it 
but it feels like the absence of existence. Uh, it only hits you for 14 points of damage, although I think that's more than a weasel can take, right? We well, weasels have a juicy one HP, so Walnut <laughs> turns, turns back into her regular form uh, and is just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, you all see the weasel get slapped off the back of the Kandori and like, uh, Walnut hits the ground. Um, it is cold damage that you take, 14 points of cold damage, but again, it was not that. And the tentacles lash for a moment and then just sort of retract. And you're holding this black orb. Uh, I'm holding a black orb? I'm just like, have I had this the whole time? <laughs> is that the sextant? That is the sextant. Is this, is this sextant. A, is this the sextant? sextant. Looks like a, doesn't look like a tent to me. Well, well, Thank like, you. Is this oh, medicine? No. And just like goes to start no, taking no, a no, bite no, out no, of it. No, 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 no. <laughs> it very much Kuba's like, you know, like yeah. chewing on it with no, you. No, no, Kuba, no, 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 come here, no, 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 stop it. <laughs> it does listen to you, just sort of like puts his wings over his face because no, of the no. embarrassment. Oh. We don't eat shiny things. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh as you all are making your way back out, because between that natural 20 and all the other things, you make your way back out much further, uh, much faster than you came in. And Evelyn, you see Treppy go, It's okay, you were sleeping. It's okay, everything's fine. Just go back in your purse. Just go back and in. The moment you hear, everything's fine, just go back in your purse, you all hear. <laughs> a noise that shakes the whole ship. And Treppy does dive into the purse. And like come up like, he, like he's afraid and put his claws over his eyes and duck Aww. back down. Uh, let's go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while you're coming back out, um, you see Photos is flying and is holding something in his feet and oh. says, Daddy! Found a shiny. Oh, I just reacted in the complete opposite way that Kent would have reacted because shiny. So let's see it! Uh, that is you, your child. <laughs> uh, he hands you a very elaborate bracer with swords carved around the edges of it. <sighs> photos? Where did you find? You know what? Don't tell me where you found this. Yes. Uh, uh, photos did good. Photos. Mm, was there another one? Is this a match set? Do we need to go back? He just looks at you very confused. No, nope, just the one. There photos was did okay. good. Photos did good. Photos did good. <laughs> oh. And you see, he like takes off and flies away again. And a second later, comes back holding a second one. And like, <sighs> photos, photos do good again. Photos do even better. God, I would not have known what to do with them if I was asymmetrical. You see, his chest very much flares out and looks at Tycho like. I'm going to take him from, I, I don't know if he's come back to my shoulders or where he is, yeah. but I'm going to put him on my head. I'm going mm -hmm. to just move the, I'm going to move the feather aside and put him on top so he can preen up there. Virgil, you very much feel Tycho growling. He's just vibrating <laughs> with, with anger at this. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Kent, you have found, um, what have you found, Kent? Uh, so Kent tries these on because they, you know, happen to match the outfit and, and that's about as far as he thought. Uh, but as he slides his hands away, he suddenly finds two daggers, one in each hand, uh, and realizes that these are bracers of flying daggers. Because the good people, the players of Idol Champions have voted that you would find a weapon and that is the weapon that you chose. And congratulations. Yeah. Yes, you have this. Um, Kent, mm. you see, or Virgil, sorry. Mm. Tycho's just sort of like narrows his eyes and just takes off and goes flying away. And then a few moments later comes back with a very oddly shaped black rock and flies up and just puts it down at your feet, Virgil. And like looks at you very expected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
don't <laughs> laugh. Do not laugh. Um, Virgil uh, picks picks up picks up the rock. Is it? Is there anything interesting about it at all? It's magical. It is. There is an odd twisting, warping energy, but it is something special. It is not just a rock. I wish I hadn't picked it up. Okay. <laughs> You, while you're holding it and think about it for a second, when you're pondering what it does, you see a rift in reality appears near your head and a slimy tentacle comes out and lashes around and then flies back through it, the rift shuts. And Tycho looks at that and looks back at you and goes, Tycho, do very good. Yeah. Tycho did very good. And, and Virgil just tucks it away into his coat, trying not to not to physically touch it with any part of his body. <laughs> you have found a far realm shard. Uh, again, is voted on by the good people here, as was the fact that you found an astral elf star moth here. And Ooh. again, that Evelyn got uh, double damage dice. There's only one, maybe two things oh. left to resolve. Oh. Um, as you all make your way back up towards the deck of the ship, um, you hear shouting and chaos coming from the other ship as you look out across and a gargantuan sight is there. A full-size astral dreadnought, <gasps> much bigger than the ship, has it in both claws, and you see its eyes looking at the deck, and shaking the sh uh, shaking the light. Fantastic. Is and it looking for see, Treppy? You see, Treppy pokes his head out and looks at it, and covers his eye and ducks <laughs> back down. Don't worry, Treppy. We'll protect you. And since we've already rolled initiative. <laughs> oh, no. oh, come on. The last two things is Treppy, the baby astral dreadnought, causes chaos uh, with his little song that he didn't know that anything was going to answer to. <sighs> because an astral dreadnought mm -hmm. was <laughs> what the good players of Idle Champions voted is what was coming for you. Good news, bad Thanks. news. We'll keep initiative. Bad news is, you might recall, the monster was acting on a natural 20. Mm -hmm. So, the Astral Dreadnought, um, again, where Treppy has these cute little gums, um, this has razor sharp teeth uh, that are is almost as long as a person, and these gargantuan claws, and its huge slug-like body just sort of trails off literally into nothing. It's like it doesn't have an end. It just goes and then isn't anymore. Uh, and well, first, let me just see something here. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's noticed you so far. Uh, so it is, well, hang on. Let me double check something here. No, unfortunately, it absolutely notices you. You see, it looks up and just drops the ship which again starts listing slightly, but stays there uh, and immediately is going to try and claw at you, Evelyn. Um, unfortunately, it has a very significant um, plus to hit. Uh, you said your AC is 18, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, it almost can't miss. Wait, with your weapon? Uh, you, is that the bonus? Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Oh, damn. All right. So mm. you would think more, two, but no. Two things happen. <laughs> uh, is you all see this thing turns and looks at you. Its central eye is just like a swirling mass of galaxies where Treppy kind of has this star. It is just this swirling scintillating star pattern. And when it looks at you, all of your magic stops working. Ah! Oh. Your items <laughs> fail, everything but artifacts. If you have any artifacts, they keep working. Uh, your ambient magic, everything, you just feel yourself like you've been shut off. And So my boots fail too. Yep. Every, every non-artifact magical item and effect ceases while it's looking at you. 
Uh, and unfortunately, it is going to come in with a not insignificant amount of damage, Evelyn. Uh, 36 force damage. And then another 38 force damage. 36 and 38, so 74. You all see this gargantuan thing is down on Evelyn. Um, I like to imagine Evelyn is like mm -hmm. huddled over the bag that Treppy mm -hmm. is in, like taking the hits to the back to keep him safe. Evelyn, you notice as you're doing this and it's coming at you, you see Treppy sort of looks past you at it and again just covers its head like it's very small. As you all see this thing just raining a beating uh, down on Evelyn. But Kent, it is your turn. Oh, good. Well, I think the first thing I do is grab for my bracers because I'm ready to do something awesome and then they come away empty. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, you very much are like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, just a quick yes. second. What I what I just got was that spell damage? Force damage. Force damage. Yeah. Okay, it, no no magic spell happening here. No. Okay, never mind. Not, o sorry. not only that, you are in an anti-magic field, in fact. Just checking. Mm -hmm. I have some resistances, none of them apply. Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> they never do. No. Yeah, that's how they get you. Yep. I love it. Um, all right. Well, seeing that the uh, bracers didn't come out, good gravy. Well, I didn't climb the spider, so it does feel a little bit like I should try and at least ride the claw that was bashing on, on Evelyn. Uh, Kent has had a fairly eventful life. Um, has Kent ever encountered a... Uh, oh my God. Uh, Is a, it about uh, to end? Well, I mean... <laughs> baby. Yeah. Uh, has... <laughs> Has, uh, have you ever encountered a beholder before? Yes, beholder, yes. Uh, then you are familiar with the anti-magic field that a beholder emits out of its eye. So oh, although this is much larger, if you can get out of the way of its eye, uh, your magic will work up to and including climbing the thing. Yeah, I mean, I think then all the more reason to climb the claw that's coming for Evelyn to eventually get up to deal with the eye. So yeah. yeah. This thing is gargantuan. So it is very, very, very big. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I will. I will try and start that process. Uh, try and grab onto the the appendage that was that was attacking Evelyn and pull myself up. I will. I will stab at it as I'm running towards uh, the top of its head where the yep. where the big eye is. You can go ahead and make your attack. Um, and you know what I'll yeah. do also is I'm gonna uh, I take the <laughs> seeing that the daggers weren't gonna work anyway I'll take the rapier and I'll stab one of the uh, poison vials on my boots so I'll add a little poison to it uh, yes. which will bypass yeah. any resistances if the dreadnought has any anything non magical will still work Great. So go ahead and roll it all right uh, that is a twenty three to hit that is more than enough great uh, allies within range for sneak question mark uh, yes I will say okay. they are great. Uh, so 15 plus 21 is 36 plus 20 is 56 plus 56. two 56 piercing and then a little bit of poison eight more so what is that 64 altogether perfect um let me just check something here great um is like you a con save. In, Sorry. Anything else? Oh, it needs a con save? I think, yeah, I think it gets a con save for that poison yeah. damage. It's got a pretty chunky con. Yeah, um, that's fine. Uh, although I roll very poorly. What's the save? Uh, what a good question. It's a DC 14. Uh, I only got a 12, so the poison gets through. Oh, okay, great. So the um, number that I said. <laughs> however, oh, <no>. um, <laughs> uh, as you are going by, it is going to take a claw swipe at you, Kent. That feels uh, fair. What is your AC? 18. Uh, it is very difficult for it to miss. Uh, it hits you for 19 points of force damage. Uh, I will roll with it an uncanny dodge to have that. Groovy. Uh, perfect. All right. Uh, as Kent is running up the arm of this thing, uh, next up is Evelyn. How big, I've also run into plenty of beholders before, uh, unfortunately. Do I have a sense of how big the field is? Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it is almost the entire deck of this ship. I mean, again, this thing is gargantuan. It's the size of a building. So I couldn't like run out of it? Uh, probably not. 
All right. Well, you know, my battle axe might not be magical anymore, but it's still a battle axe, and I'm still darn strong. So, time and to you, hit it with my battle axe. And you know what? Uh, because the good people of Idol Champions voted for it, I'm still gonna let the smite happen, even in the midst of a yeah. anti magic field. Really? Like divine smite in general, or just the one d8 for improved divine smite? Uh, I will let your divine smite go. Although, unfortunately. Some tricky is going to happen first. <laughs> Evelyn, yeah. is you are running towards this thing, about to smash into it. You see it looks straight at you, and you get the distinct impression that it's looking past you and looking at Treppy. <gasps> uh, give me a wisdom save, Evelyn. Okie dokie. 23. You all see Evelyn vanishes. Out of 23? No! Oh no. Evelyn, you find yourself in a cave, a bare stone floor, surrounded by corpses. Don't love it. And as you stand up and sort of start to get to your feet, the rest of you see Trappy laying on the deck of the ship in a huge claw coming down to grab it as it crawls and is trying to scramble away. You said nothing would happen to our pets? And that, I think, is a good place for us to stop. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, no. come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's thank what you that all. feels like. Then, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's how the turns of tables get started. Feels. Yeah, they sure have. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all uh, for tuning in. My giveaway winners. Uh, oh, hang on. I know the problem here. Um, v, who is here in production. Thank you, V. You're wonderful. I was looking at the email and not the live document. Can you drop the names of the winners here in the Zoom chat for me, please? Yep, can do. I apologize. But in the meantime, while we're finding out who won, thank you, Luca and V, for producing this episode. Got to be hands-on there at the last second. Very hands-on. Jay and Jordan for moderating the chat, as always. Thank you to Anna, Brian, Eugenio, Holly, and Tristan for bringing your characters to life. What kind of monster would give you these sweet babies <laughs> just to emotionally <laughs> torment you by imperiling them? Yeah, thank you, B Dave, for giving yes. me a Thanks. pet and then taking it away. Yeah. It's my favorite pain to experience. Yeah. Uh, also, again, I don't know why I'm listed in the thank yous. So thank you, Anna, for thanking me because it's disingenuous <laughs> when I thank me. Uh, Kent is available in Idol Champions right now. And I'm pretty Wait. sure most, if not all, of those super swank Spelljammer skins are available now too. So you can, uh, you can put uh, a little bit of extra zhizh on your formation there. Episode two winners. Oh my God, how do I say that? Uh, <laughs> Kalinar506 wins the two Spelljammer boosters. Uh, Zellquix wins the Ahoy Matey collection. Uh, remember to use code RealmSpace15, Realm Space 15, months enunciate at dndmini.com for 15% off your next order. Thank you to WizKids, that expires on October 30th. Um, you know, and uh, I'll see you next week. I'm sure these sweet, Cute babies are fine, and Evelyn's not trapped forever in the infinite stomach of an astral dreadnought. Like it's gonna be. Don't even worry oh, about it. Oh, the stomach. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's, oh. it's 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 a demi plane. Don't worry about it. It's fine. fine. I'm sure it's gonna be okay. But we one way or another, it. we'll find out next week. Thank no, you all I'm so uh, much. I'm off the show, guys. This will be my last show. Uh, thanks for everything. Oh no! Oh, great. The, oh, death, yeah. the death of Evelyn. <laughs> I will succeed where Perkins has failed. Oh my god. <laughs> There's worse Bye. things than death. Bye, y'all. Bye. It's like a sarlacc. <laughs> <laughs>